What's going on, everybody? This is Dubs here, and this year with Retro Handheld, we're going to be doing a how-to guide on the fly. So I got my Cold Gray Odin 2 from AYN. Uh, this is a pro model, and uh, we're going to skip over all the review stuff, unbox it really quick because I'm stoked to play with this thing, uh, and set it up from scratch. So this is much more of a workshop than it is one of our usual type of live streams. So we'll try to keep the shenanigans possibly to a minimum as best we can and just set this up. I don't know, Aisha, is it possible for us? I mean, it's kind of what we do, you know. It's, it's kind what of the people shtick. want. It's yeah. our shtick. Okay, well, um, Cold Gray, yeah. This was shipped out last week and it's already here. I always like that they oh. include, you know, all the, the how-tos and the specs on this nice little yep. graphic. It's fun. AYN does a, does a little extra hey. with their packaging, and I appreciate Oh, it's, Screen it's protector. just on the top now. Well, uh, supposedly in the last, in the review unit model that we got, that you have now, uh, mm -hmm. supposedly there's a screen protector in there, but it's hidden. There, It might be. A, 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 a box should be around here. So this is one I bought with my monies, and... Came very, very fast, so I was impressed. Um, AYN's really getting on top of their time frames with this mm -hmm. stuff. And if anyone is into this and is looking to get one, of course, you can pick it up in our description. Uh, RetroHandhelds.link forward slash uh, Odin2, and it's on the screen. So we're making it easy for everybody. Just pick one up. It doesn't cost you any extra. Just follow that link, and it'll take you right there. And uh, everyone to be aware that IGG, the Indiegogo campaign, ends at the end of the weekend, and then prices will be going up, and then it'll be on sale on their website. This link is still going to work. It's I'm going to switch it so it goes to the website, though, when the cutover happens. Which, even with a uh, regular retail price, I'd say it's well worth it. But if you're yeah. even considering it, just jump on it now, because if you're getting this for an early bird price, you're getting one, you're getting a great deal on it. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to put the screen protector on right now, but I remember that uh, the one that Russ had, that there was a little notch out for mm -hmm. like a phone or something. And Zoo was showing it in his video. This mm -hmm. one appears to have removed that. So that's great. They probably that's just didn't clean. have them ready for, for review units yet. So this is the actual retail exciting tempered glass screen protector. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, as far as accessories with this bad boy, you might also want to pick yourself up a charger. It will come with the 45 watt charger, but this 100 watt gone charger is awesome. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a Bluetooth controller, something like this 8-bit Do Light, <laughs> also in the description. Uh, you're gonna, we're going to be using a Transcend micro SD card adapter. This is USB uh, 3.0. USB yep. So it fits large size and small size. This is the fastest one I've found for transferring ROMs and BIOS files. Also find it below. Uh, as well as we have a brand new one terabyte. I got this during Prime, the Prime Day Ooh. sales for like, what, 60 some dollars or something crazy like that. I can't believe how much prices have dropped on those. I know. It's crazy, man. man. Um, so I got a one terabyte and this one we're going to set up. I also have a pre-set up one. This is the one from my odin stream before when i had the white version that's a 512 as well as one a company sent to us to review recently this one's just preloaded with games so you don't have to do anything it's just ready to go so convenient also find that below and then you want a case so ayn sells cases i haven't picked up one of theirs for the odin 2 but i love this one by waterfield design it has a magnetic clasp and you know how i love magnets so this nice. is meant to be for a switch, but it fits the Odin 2 really, really nice. And the Odin 1, by the way. And mm -hmm. this is my travel case, so it's nice canvas. I need to add this to the description as well. But uh, yeah, Waterfield Design, fancy, nice, high-quality cases. You're also going to need a microfiber cloth, like this one from Waka. Keep that screen nice and clean crisp white right here for reference if anybody 
hasn't seen the review video yet, we have a review video with a white unit. We have one with a blue unit and now you can see the cold gray. So if you're not sure about the color and you're wondering which one you should order, just yep. go watch those videos and you're, you're going to get a really good reference. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that white one. It's so clean, but the one I decided for keepsies ended up being, uh, yeah, this bad boy. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, okay, let me, let me move over here. The LED lights, let's talk about those. So I was really excited for the blue, and then I'm like, well, maybe I should do purple. And then I, then I said, no, I don't want any of the transparent colors. I watched Zoo's video and Russ's video, and they showed that uh, even when the lights are when the lights are out, the LED just the the LED on top showing the power being on is glowing in the dark as well. Uh, so I kind of like having the LED lights, and I'm just not going to use them in the transparent model. It's just way too much over the top for me. So I, I decided I want a static color here where it's a little cleaner. And the cold gray seemed the most fun to me. It brings that back that nostalgic SNES look. And white, it, 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 it's very pure. It's very nice. I'm just afraid of scuffing it up and getting like dirt or gunk on it. And uh, and black tends to get fingerprinty for me. So this is the one I landed on. And this is my keeper. I also ordered a Max and I switched that one to cold gray. So I can do a comparison between switch performance on Max versus Pro because I want to see is that Max with 16 gigs of RAM worth it? Uh, the Pro here comes packed with uh, eight gigs or sorry, 12 gigs of RAM, and the base model has eight gigs. So also nothing wrong with picking up the base. That one should handle pretty much everything up to Switch pretty easily. Yeah, even most Switch games should work just fine in it. It's just some of the the higher end ones like Tears of the Kingdom that really do push that RAM. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple months that's not even an issue either when user gets a little better. Now, one thing I have been reading, though, is that a 16 gigabyte model, if you're interested in using Linux on the Odin because they are working on the Linux option, there are a couple games with Yuzu that without the 16 gigs were crashing. So keep that in mind that if you do want that option to be on the safe side, probably go with the at least the 12 gig. If not, mm -hmm. the 16 gig is probably going to be the, the safe bet. Yeah, and if you want a Odin now, Pro is the one currently shipping. That's how I got this so fast. I actually just bought this like a week ago. So Pro is shipping now, especially the cold gray. Uh, if you want the Max, though, that is, I think, at the end of the line. Get the transparent colors as well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, base units, I'm not sure when they're shipping. But it seems to be with these companies, I always think the higher tier ships first. This one happens to be the middle tier shipping first. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, check out the Odin 2 dashboard. Apparently that went live today. I got to check that out, Ban. Thanks for calling that out. So forget everything I just said. Go look at the Odin 2 dashboard. I'll make sure to put that into the description. They were to saying see. that the Max is going out last, though. The, okay, the Max is going out last. That yeah. makes sense. Well, it seems more specialized, right? Yep. Yeah. Also, somebody in chat was asking if it has an OLED screen. It does not have an OLED screen, but that mm -hmm. screen is really good. If you want to see a comparison, I it's in my review video. Look with the for the one with the white Odin. I do a head-to-head -head comparison with the Switch OLED and the Pimax Portal, which has that QLED screen. So go check out that video if you want to see a comparison. But spoiler, the screen uh, holds its own against those. It does, yeah. It looks better than the Pimax screen. Maybe not oh, yeah. quite as crisp as an OLED screen which I have my Switch OLED here today. And it actually, I'm rocking that uh, that CRKD Nitro deck on here. So this is the SNES color, matches the Odin pretty nicely. And we'll take a look at the screen while we're at it. All right. So why we don't, don't you turn that on? Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, 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 no, no. What were you saying? No, you. Oh, go I was going to say. I was going to say for for people that feel like the max being last is is kind of is is a little messed up. Consider that the shipping date originally was December, so they were yeah. just able to get this out sooner. So we're still within that original time frame. Chances are, if you get a max, you're going to get it by that original release date. Yeah. I've been really enjoying Mario Wonder, by the way, this week since you and Russ talked me into yeah. it. I was playing it for a little while. It's a really good game. You should try doing it in Chinese. In Chinese? Yeah, just let's do the setup in Chinese. Let's see how this goes. Oh, oh okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to pull it off camera for this part. Why don't we... Uh... 
Here's the switch. In the meantime, you can watch the switch. Oh, yeah. You know what? My favorite gaming series of all time, my favorite RPG series oh. is a series called Gothic. And Gothic was released in Germany by Piranha Bytes, and they just ported it to freaking Switch. Oh. No one's talking about it. And I saw it just randomly show up in the store without any fanfare, and I'm freaking hyped about it. That's uh, that's how you know the Switch is at the, at the end of its life. It's because you're getting a bunch of ports. So somebody was asking for a comparison of the original Odin with the Odin 2, like the thickness. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Let's uh... let me turn this side with here right on my camera. So yeah, it's a little bit thicker, but it actually just feels better in the hand because of the grips. The grips are a lot bigger. So here you go. Here's the let's see if I can get both of these in there. I'll have them upside down. Sorry about that. How dare you? I know. I'm... Ah, there you go. There's the size of both of them. The screens are the same size. It's just black bezel, white bezel. But yeah, there's there's a comparison. A little thicker, but more comfortable. I like that. I see, oh, man. I see, the, as soon as you get that first uh, flower and everything goes crazy, you, you start appreciating mm -hmm. that game. Yeah, it seems pretty neato. It's the, the Switch is still amazing, man. It's crazy how such old tech is still getting good games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't and, walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, so I'm gonna there get you go. my and wi most of on. those great games are gonna work on the Odin too, so there's that's a big plus for us i like that mm -hmm. <laughs> i like him thick uh so you're going to be met here with different settings first you're going to set up your wi-fi then you're going to have to set up your time zone mm -hmm. and by the way everybody uh this was this was your request this this live stream mm -hmm. uh, a fan requested in our channel saying hey i'd love to get a complete setup guide while i wait for my odin seeing how you do it just raw <laughs> from step a to step z so that's what we're going to attempt today and Aish is here to keep me on track because i will wander into who knows what we just now we just need somebody to keep me on track and we'll be set <laughs> and then we're all good go. <laughs> we're good to go uh, i mean if uh, you're if, um, well okay so here i'm gonna stop each i gotta stop each mm -hmm. step of the way here so people understand uh you have two options here so you have the aosp launcher and that's gonna be your classic android launcher and then you have the odin launcher which is a simplified launcher that's pretty basic right now i i wouldn't recommend it unless you're just gonna set up one or two things uh and go if you're gonna have a front end you want to set up with your own box art and all that i definitely recommend going with the aosp R1 goes next, and then choose your gesture navigation or three button. Three button is really old school at this point, so I would go with the gesture. It's just easy to swipe up and, yeah, get to what you need. When you're done, hit start, complete. You're dropped here in Android, which this is Android 13, right? 13, yep. Yeah. Yep, 13. It's 2023. If you're using the three button layout, we need to talk. Like, <laughs> it's time to move on. It's not. It's not gonna it's work. Not, no. If you're familiar with setting up any type of Android tablets, you're gonna feel right at home with this. Yeah. Goodbye, Mario. Oh, let's see. I think it was, oh yeah, banned. It's pretty easy to swipe up. As I say it and I can't do it now. There we go. So I'm not seeing the screen though, but yeah. See? Some people still like the three button layout. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely works. It just takes up screen real estate. that starts to drive me crazy. You it know, does. you can memorize the gestures pretty quick. Swipe, swipe up. It's three gestures. <laughs> and two of them do the same thing. You know, we'd love to get ETA on here. We've invited him before. Uh, we haven't heard back from his people, though. Um, you know, we had uh, Tech Tweeb on here recently. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. OKS Gamer, I would love to have OKS Gamer on. Uh, we need to reach out to him and RetroPie. Sure, yeah. Uh, it, it all depends on other creators and their schedules, yeah. you know. 
<laughs> don't do three button layout no OLED. yeah 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 oh yeah that would be you know apparently OLED screens are better though and you don't really get burn in that easy at really? least that's what uh bob Woodch wolf showed with the uh, switch OLED. i think he's ran it for like over a thousand hours and it's just now starting to get some some burn in really that's incredible okay so once you're in android here Aish, what do we do first you make sure you don't have three button navigation <laughs> no so okay. the first thing you're, you're gonna want to do is uh go ahead and uh well it depends if you want to play android games on here too set up the google play store so set up okay. your google account uh, if you're one of those people that doesn't want to do that then we're gonna have to open our browser and uh that could be your browser of choice well mozilla google chrome i'm a google chrome guy myself because i just like everything integrated and start looking for your emulators okay so open up a browser Mm -hmm. and what emulators would we want to get so for most things because the odin is so powerful i would say go with retroarch for everything potentially up to dreamcast if you just want to have one unified experience and you don't you want to have like the same hotkeys for everything just go with that it's everything's going to run great the only systems from that time period that i would say don't go retroarch is psp ds and um I say that's about it. Everything else you can run in RetroArch with okay. really no problem. So go to RetroArch. You get it from their main site, the Google Play Store one. Seems like it's not as up to date, so you can just get it from them. So I just go to I just googled RetroArch, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go to Downloads. download tab. Yep. Get rid of the ad, mm -hmm. and then scroll down to the one that's for Android. Yes. So look for the little robot. Mm -hmm. There he as is. As you can see, it's for everything. So. Yes, it is. And we want to do the 64-bit standalone, right? Yes. Or do we not need 64-bit these days? Uh, I'm. You know what? That's a good question. I just always go with 64-bit. I always do, I too. Any issues, and that's just kind of... That's my... That's, my that's what I do, too. So, yeah. Uh, you can it's say... say that, yeah. Yeah, you can say, all good. I want to download it. On lower end Android handheld, something like the Retroid Pocket 2S, you know, it's it's leaving Play Store on can eat some resources. Something mm -hmm. like the Odin, any of the SKUs for the Odin, Base, Pro, or Max, all of them are going to work just fine having the Play Store on all the time. Yeah. It's not really going to be a bottleneck. Quick note there, the other system I was thinking about to use the standalone for was Sega Saturn. Uh, use the Java Sanshiro 2 Pro for that one. Just because it, it tends to run a little smoother. I don't know how many people are really interested in the Sega Saturn for this system, but if you are one of those, it's it's worth it to get that that version. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Get that Yaba in your life. Yep. Uh, so once the file's downloaded, you're gonna go swipe out of here and go into files. Yep. Should be and your you downloads. Should see, it should it should default to your downloads folder. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be the latest one, the only one there. And it's going to say, hey, guess what? We want to use unknown sources for this. You're like, yes, allow this source. So we're going to say yes, and then install. And if this is your first time installing emulators, you're probably going to see that a lot from unknown sources and all that. Don't worry. Like, just follow the ones we're recommending here, and you're going to be fine. Yep. So from here, most new users to RetroArch, and I include myself, like back in the day when I first opened it, I was like, what is this? I don't know where anything is. Yeah. You're going to want to change the, the layout of it. So we're going to okay. go to settings. Okay, find okay. that little gear there. Let me, let me uh, reposition myself here, sir. Ah, okay. Okay. I think we just so played sideways. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then we'll go to drivers. Down, down, down. There we go. Oh, it's swapped. You're right. Yep. Drivers. And uh, menu drivers, the first one we're going to fix. Make it something a little more, more pleasant. If you want that PSP, PS Vita type of look, PlayStation 3, XMV is fine. I, If I'm not mistaking my names again, Ozone is the one I usually use. Yep. I like and Ozone the best, too. Yeah, me too. And now you have to get out of it so that it does the, does the switch. So, yeah, then you go home configuration save current configuration quit and now it's going to be on your home screen so mm -hmm. relaunch it now we have a new interface yep 
much better one in my opinion to navigate yep and we want to change the controls right yes so you want to set up the what well, uh, sorry they should be mapped uh, appropriately because i believe there's already like a file for it but we go to input what we do want to set up is our hotkeys right yeah hotkey yeah. enable so this is up to personal preference i like to mm -hmm. do either select or left click so l3 um on the odin 2 i think it's going to be easiest to do left stick you could also use the one of the back keys for that. Personally, I don't like using select just because some Game Boy Advance, Advance games do use select. Right. And it gets annoying like if you're playing um oh, Game Boy Advance because I just forgot the name of it. I was literally gonna say <laughs> it. But uh oh man, I'm I'm spacing out on the name of that game. It's an RPG. It's all golden good. sun. It's golden sun. Golden like sun, select yeah. does have a function. So every time you try to press it to use a hotkey, you're going to get a menu pop up. So it's kind of annoying. So I, I would say maybe the back button or L3 R3, which you're probably not going to be using a whole lot anyway. I, and again, yeah, I think it's personal preference. I'm yep. for today. I'm the most comfortable using my left stick. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that. But I like using the back button. So there are two back buttons on this. Yep. And I got to say, guys, I, I haven't talked about the cold gray yet, but this looks absolutely stunning. I love the matte, high quality plastic that's on here. It does have glossy face buttons, as you've seen on the Odin 2, but I like it. It's a dark purple, and it's actually kind of hard to see the letters on there, but you can see it's, you know, A, B, X, Y. Love that. You get these nice concave hall sticks here, mm -hmm. which are so smooth to turn so smooth yes even though they're small you're really not going to have issues with them just because of how much travel they mm -hmm. have nice clicky d-pad i like the gray i like the gray buttons um mixed with the purple and mm -hmm. the gray shell kind of a cool gray and then you got these function buttons m1 m2 back here which are in a great spot mm -hmm. so yeah if just... you've never used those sticks i think the best way to describe them for people because i know some people are worried about the size is mm -hmm. a switched stick pivots so you you have like right. one set point and it just feels like it goes side to side whereas these actually feel like they have travel when you're moving them more like a full-size controller yep uh, i like to have fps as an option so mm -hmm. i do that to r2 or sorry l2 usually and the other ones i like to set are going to be and go up here there's a lot of hotkeys you can choose from but yes for me menu, usually yeah a menu toggle definitely is something i do i usually do triangle or or x mm -hmm. for that uh quit this one you can set as a combo but we'll mm -hmm. skip that i'll just set that one to y actually i'll, I'll do it as the right stick close content i'll do y uh, fast forward, I like to do toggle, so I can just mm -hmm. hit the fast forward and just let it run. Same. And then the other ones I set are save state, which I usually do as R1, and load state I usually do as L1. It's cool seeing somebody else set up their hotkeys because they're different from the ones I use. Right? I, yeah. It's... Yeah. I'm just so hotkeys. used to doing it this particular way. Yep. Hotkeys are really going to come down to what you're used to. Like if you're coming from a Linux handheld, you can set them up exactly like what you're used to and you're not going to have a problem making the transition. That's why I like RetroArch and I recommend people try it out. It's a little intimidating at first, but once you kind of set everything up, it's just, it's you're a good. simple way of doing it. Plus, if you want to dock your Odin and play a lot of these games, mm -hmm. RetroArch is the best way to go because RetroArch will uh, recognize external controllers. That's the other thing, yeah. If you're interested in docking this and playing mm -hmm. this on your TV or using an external display, you're going to want to get that docking station. It's about 50 yeah. bucks. I don't have one. I didn't pick one up because I don't I don't usually dock my handhelds. Mm -hmm. But it is, I mean, this suits well as being a good Android TV replacement. You yep. can just pop it up on your media console and then uh, use it as like a Plex server even if you want it or play 4K in pretty much any system you want minus Switch. Yes. And um <clears throat> slays the NVIDIA shield. You, yeah, technically I think you can use like any USB type C connection with, with mm -hmm. USB type C to HDMI, but usually using the official dock for any system is just gonna be a better experience. Yeah, absolutely. Uh okay, so 
Ace, what do we want to do next here? Anything else? We want to get our cores, right? So we cores... want to get our cores and then, and yeah, that's the next step. Get your cores because if not, none of your content's going to show up. Yeah, and that's going to be under the online updater. Yes. So by default, when you download RetroArch, you, you don't have any of your emulators. So mm -hmm. RetroArch being a front end, sort of a multi emulator, it gives you the bare bones setup mm -hmm. and you have to go in and custom tailor which systems you're going to want to play on this. Yep. So we're going to go to the core downloader. I really don't play that many systems, not many of these obscure ones anyways, um, but I usually do Final Burn Neo for arcade. That covers me for everything that I want to play. Mm -hmm. If you're an Atari fan, you got your Stella for 2600. I'll skip that for today. Yeah, probably don't get an Odin 2 for Atari. <laughs> Might be overkill. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, there's so many options here. Mm -hmm. For Nintendo, you don't probably want to run 3DS on or DS Android. For that matter. Yeah. Or DS, Well, I think DS is okay for RetroArch, like Melon DS. But standalone is yeah. going to look better. I it do is. I do RetroArch for DS only because Retro Achievements, which is fun dopamine hits for uh, That's true. That's pats true. on it's, the back. It's just you trade off like the custom, uh, customization I'm, of uh, Drastic. Yeah, yeah, for the retro achievements, so it really depends on what you value more, and um, Game... I just feel like uh, Drastic is a better experience for DS. Uh, Game Boy, I do Gambit. Yep, same. Game Boy Advance, I do MGBA. I was a GPSP guy for a long time until recently. I just I finally accepted that we have enough power in these things to run. MGBA. We can run. Yep, MGBA is great because you can simulate things like Golden Sun. You can do the light sensor and all that. Yep. Uh, for NES, I like to do Messin. It's mm -hmm. a bit more resource intensive, but it's so accurate. And it's most, NES guys. <laughs> yeah, even even the Retroid Pocket 2S and and like mid range uh, Android handhelds will run Messin just fine. Yep. For N64, personally, I like Parallel, but I know that GLS3 tends to be the more popular one. Aish, what do you feel between those two? I go with parallel just because I get a faster fa like speed up whenever I'm using fast forward in certain games. So Me that's too. that's why like I prioritize that over how accurate it is. Yep. And then for SNES, I usually like to do just SNEX 9X current. Yep, same. So. You could probably do um BSNES, I think it's called, and you could. mess around with like the widescreen ones, but that's gonna be really resource intensive and that's a little more in depth than what we want to cover right now. Yeah, yeah. And also, just while we're here, you have all of these options up here. We'll we'll get to this later, but I want to turn yeah. on the ambient LEDs because they're fun. It's so nice they got that in there too. And we got color now, and now we have brightness mm -hmm. for these. Leave it on a low brightness. Green. Let's do pink. Oh look! Look at that! Oh look! Oh look! Ah yeah! Look at that! That's the good. reason we don't just do BS BS NES is because we are creatures of habit and we <laughs> we go with what we know. You can do that core too. It's just more demanding, so it really depends. But I guess we have more than enough power for that. But yeah, somebody mentioned in the comments, and that's why I'm responding, by the way. It's just uh it's up to you. And then we have I personally am okay doing Dreamcast in RetroArch. Some people are purists since they do standalone. Uh, for retro achievements, I will take the the mm -hmm. the the retro achievement uh, or the retro arch core. So Same. Flycast <laughs> is the one I do for that. Uh, for Genesis, all the Sega, most of the lower end Sega systems are all run really well by just Genesis plus GX. So mm -hmm. do that. I know some people like wide with sixteen by nine, but I feel like it, it it has too many glitches. It just it doesn't look good. And then for for Saturn, I just do Beetle Saturn because it's retro mm -hmm. achievement compatible. Although Saturn's one, if you want to look a little, have it look a little better and do some upscaling, I would do the standalone Yabash and Shiro. Mm -hmm. For the sake of integration, though, use RetroArch as much as possible. Yeah, Neo Geo Pocket, uh, pretty easy choice there. I always do Beetle Neo Pop. Race is fine. It's uh, it's coming along. And then PlayStation, I actually don't do PlayStation RetroArch, so I do standalone Duck Station because it's beautiful and amazing. <laughs> I was way. I was like that too, but I've converted back to PCSX. Oh, what? Yeah. Why? 
uh, I forgot what I was reading up on it and just how easy it is and it runs and everything. And sometimes I want to transfer saves from uh, uh, one handle to another. Oh, so I man. ended up using that. I, I know uh, Swan Station has uh, like more upscales, but I think it's an older court. It hasn't been updated. And no, man. Standalone standalone is better don't get me wrong I'm standalone just is standalone got retro achievements in that build dude you got upscaling you, the the widescreen patches like it, all of it is excellent but i know yeah, what it's a little ducky I, I yeah it's mean. just that i it's what i've been doing i've been trying to keep, keep as many things as possible in retroarch yeah also i think playstation used that core on like the mini or something like that so if it's good enough for them i'm gonna run i'm, I'm gonna use it and it's yeah, yeah and it's I mean, uh that's all good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And if and if you are into it, into this, uh, get one at that link. Uh, so I don't do PPSSPP out of RetroArch normally, mm -hmm. unless I really have to. I use the standalone that has Retro yeah. Achievements built in now too, and it's just so much better. It runs every game better. It looks better. It's it's a good interface. Like yeah, it's yep. one of those that you definitely want to go with with standalone. I remember Sorry. even when I was using uh when I first got a Win Win six hundred, I tried a PPSSP in Retroarch, and it was it was not a great experience. I went really? with a standalone, and I was I think I was in like four X with no issues. That is that is yeah, that's fun. And then I don't think there's I think that's everything. Yeah, those are the main ones that that I play too. Yeah, there's other more obscure systems. So if if there's a system that you're trying to run. Um, chances are you're going to find a core here, but they're, they're a little more specialized. So, well, and next, so a lot of these systems aren't going to run because you got to set your BIOS files. You don't have BIOS files. So these are mm -hmm. files that, uh, originally ran on the, the old hardware and you need to either extract it from those old systems yourself, which, you know, uh, you, you could do, or you could go find it at uh, a link. I don't know what link you would go to get them at but you could type in any number of links that are available on the internet. Um, yeah. I could, think there's an archive somewhere. There's that an archive. Have all these things. Yeah. There's an archive somewhere. Um, oh, what the heck is that on screen? I don't know where that came from. Don't, yeah. don't go, don't go there. That's, don't Google it. That's what we always tell people. Don't Just go to that place. Don't Google that's stuff. We don't, tell you don't want to go there. That's not definitely yeah. not a place to go for no. BIOS files and ROMs. No, um, no. okay. You would never, not us um no god no achievements that's you know important to me so i i do like to mm -hmm. set that up real easy don't do it on camera i'll, I'll don't worry i won't show you my password okay <laughs> i'm stubborn if you want to add me as a friend i'm stubborn <laughs> pixel we can compare achievements i'm very stubborn i don't know if there's a vault or a layer um i mean no no not google that one. it no 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 at your own risk no well, somebody's asking in chat i'm just telling them but we don't know about anything like that we don't know nothing about that nope no 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 well i it, it mean let's let's be clear here the material is out there everything you need yes. is out there every mm -hmm. rom every game you could possibly want to play to your heart's content from atari up through nintendo switch is available on the internet yes um it, where you would get those it's just it's tough to say but yeah you could follow links and different ideas that you have um visibility i usually do hardcore mode off hardcore mode off because that stops the ability from save states working and fast forward and all that mm -hmm. if you want to get double points from retro achievements though and really like have bragging rights turn hardcore on and see how far you get play some ghosts and goblins good luck uh rich presence is nice to have Test unofficial achievements. I usually leave that off. Unlock sound is fun. Extra little dopamine hit. And yeah, and there's, it looks like they've added some more functionality here over time. That's cool. Now you're going to need BIOS files. You're going to have to set where that's going to be on your, on your system. By default, it's in the RetroArch directory. I usually will put it on an SD card into a subfolder called BIOS and then mm -hmm. point Same. this at that folder. Yep. Also, if you bought one of many other handhelds chances are you have a lot of this stuff already so just pop it in your computer absolutely 
Uh, so this SanDisk Extreme, these are what I recommend for high-end Android and for Windows. You could get away with the like a Samsung Evo or an Evo Pro or a P Evo mm -hmm. Plus, but the SanDisk is not much more money. And we have this in our description. This is going to fit pretty much everything and it be at the fastest speed possible that the Odin can read and write at. Even better if you have the space and the uh, the funds for it, get that one terabyte because that will give you so much room. Switch games take up so much space, especially, and yeah. Vita games too. So uh, when you're ready to put it in, just pop open this micro SD card slot. Yeah. Do we have a link for those SD cards? Yep. Already yep, listed. So if you guys want one of those, check out the link in the description. Put it in there. So here's something funny. So a lot of these Chinese made handhelds will have the SD card and go backwards. Yep. Um, go backwards. But a lot of American ones like Analog Pocket and mm -hmm. some other makers always have it face forwards. I'm so used to it being backwards that that's just like the default way for me now. All how you go. See, yeah. when I was doing only Corpo before coming into the space, mm -hmm. I was so used to doing front facing that every time I was distracted by that. But now it's like, OK, I get it. Yeah. So now that I have that, I'm going to navigate to that. I think you have to tell it what to do with the SD card. Yeah. So you swipe down from the top. Yep. And oh, yeah, well, I mean, it's there. See, sometimes, yeah, I was just saying, because sometimes it'll ask you if you want to set up as internal or as external storage. I always go external just because I want to be able to pop it off and put it in, in a computer. But mm -hmm. it's nice to see that it's not asking you for that. So you just go parent directory and then you find usually SD card is like random numbers and letters. And I yeah. say, here's my BIOS folder. I already have it ready to go. I basically do it just for. So RetroArch, I have its own folder. All the lower end systems BIOS files are in there. I do PS2, PSX, Switch and Vita. So for this one, I'm going to say RetroArch, use this directory. And that's really all I set in here. Now I have RetroArch 100%, I think 100% good to go, right? Well, we need to add our, our game directories. No, uh, Well, if we're going to use RetroArch as a launcher, yeah. Oh, okay. that's true. That's true. Yeah, well, we could do that. So directory, yeah. we could go down to file browser. That's where it's going to default to when you go to load a game. And we can say, OK, let's go to storage. And I have a folder, a subfolder called ROMs that I drag on my games to. And I just you know, organize it by system name. I keep the system names pretty short just to keep it easy for myself. I'm going to say use this directory. And I, I really do believe that, that that's it as far as what I do for RetroArch. I don't know, H, do you do any extra setup? No, that's about it. Yeah, I, so that, Joey hate, Joey's saying that, why did I see game directories? I'm just trying to be thorough for people that haven't done this, okay? We are trying to be more thorough today. Yeah. So when you want to load your game, you say main menu, just load content, start directory. So that's going to go to that place we just set. And it's going to drop me on my SD card for my ROMs. And let's just load up some, I don't know, maybe some GBA. What's your favorite game, H, on GBA? GBA, uh, oh, that's a tough, zero mission. Zero mission? Yeah, it's tough, I know, but I, I always just default to Metroid Zero Mission. All right. So loud. These speakers are banging. Now, if you're not going to use a front end, you can just import content and just have the system show up from the main menu. It depends. If you're going to use a front end, like Reset or Digi Show, then you don't need to do that. Yeah, here we forgot something here. So it's oh, going to log true. in. Yeah. Game was not on retro achievements, or my ROM wasn't compatible, anyways. Uh, so you're going to see these touch screen controls. You can get rid of that one of two ways. You can click the little button right here and say "boop," don't want to see it, or you can go into RetroArch and then say "disable." Which, if you wanted to know how to do that, remember when you're in game, the the right side brings out that little panel. Yes. So if you swipe from the right, you are going to get your little. Hotkeys here, you can do an mm -hmm. FPS counter, which isn't entirely accurate, by the way. I wouldn't rely on that for a true FPS reading. Maybe they changed it with the latest updates. I don't know. We'll have to check that. 
Yeah. So now we're going to use our hockey to get into the menu. So for me, it's left stick plus mm -hmm. that X button. Yep. And what I'm going to look for here is under settings and then... It's a screen overlay, I believe. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I have to enable advanced settings, I think, first to even see it. Right? No, user, user interface. interface. Oh, yep. On screen, On -screen display. display. You're right. Yep. There it is. On screen overlay. There we go. Off. And I, I think by default it will save, but I, when you quit RetroArch, but I'm so paranoid for losing my configuration. I just go and I save it every single time and make a change. But that's not best practice. I mean, yeah, we're hurting Joey right now. It's just you know what? When you so used to doing this, actually telling people step by step live, without being able to edit it, you, you're gonna have a little hiccups here and there. It's it's normal. Don't don't worry about it, Joey. Yeah. And then fast forward, left stick. I like I like MGBA because by default it gives you turbo buttons on the top two here. Yeah. So you get a turbo fire. Oh, there's a system update. We need yeah, to do it takes that, a, don't we? It, it, yeah, but it takes a little bit to actually do it. So. To do it. Yeah, so we'll you might uh, want to hold off on it for a little. There's bit. a part where I want to show you on my computer some of the other ROM and APK stuff we want to get. So yep. we'll do that in a minute. These buttons, I just, I'm always so amazed at how good the Odin buttons are. These new ones are really good. Base the old ones, I ended so up getting good. some, uh, I got Sakura buttons for my old one, but on this one, it doesn't need it. Yeah. The plastic also feels way better than the original Odin. It does. Yeah. The plastic's crazy high quality. I actually like the plastic yeah. on this probably more than the transparent, although I haven't felt one of those yet. I kind of want to experience it, but Zoo has my transparent well it's your transparent now you're we did a little swap on the team <laughs> joey saying play for a little bit and then uh update so you can see the input latency you're not even going to notice it oh he thinks that there's input latency added i think he's just trying to make Joe. fun of 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 the people that are crazy about it which by the way if input latency is a big concern to you in red torch you can just turn on run ahead and you can actually get better latency than the original hardware. So it's really not even that big mm -hmm. of a deal for, for RetroArch. True. Uh, so that is RetroArch. If you want to see the Odin launcher, yeah. it's right there. And you could add your app. So you could hit plus and then boom, RetroArch, it's added. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. And if you're setting up for a relative, which wh whatever relative you're buying an Odin for, they probably think you're the, the best person on the planet. So it's really nice of you to buy them in Odin. You could you could yeah. buy one for Ban or, or, or Zoo or somebody. But uh, you have quick options to get into the system here. So you can change your LED settings. You can we should calibrate probably your controllers. Which, calibrate controls. Yeah, you can when you change you have to do. the color, the exact hue of these colors. Look at that. RGB now. We didn't have this on our last video. No. That's new. Oh, that's fun. No, well that that we we I did cover it in my review, but the new panel okay. on the drop that menu uh, is new. Sweet. So before you couldn't make those adjustments on the fly, you had to go into into uh, Odin settings. Yeah, and you have you know video output mode here, so you can do Display Port over Type C. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of options. You can go up to 4K at 60 hertz here. There are so many options. You can say no auto sleep. Turn off the handheld console screen. Turn on USB connection notification when you plug something mm -hmm. in. You can show your current network speed if you wanted to. You can change your ABXY mode if you want. If you prefer uh, Xbox layout over the mm -hmm. Nintendo Switch style. The LTL R2 mode. So if you don't want to have to bring it down all the way to get an input, you can just go digital. Which also, mm -hmm. that's another thing they fixed in the update. And my review, I said that there was a dead zone. I'd say about like 15% of the travel on the triggers wasn't registering. That's yeah. fixed now. So it's full. It registers from the moment you move it. Yeah. And I like to do both usually. So it, it works for every emulator. I don't know yep. if anyone else feels that, but I always switch I it do to that both. Too. Yep. Because it kind of, it's smart, knows what to do. You can map your M1 key and, 
and say, you know, make it a home button, make it an app switch button, go back, M2 key, same thing. Joystick calibration, you're going to need to do this after the update. The update breaks joystick, uh, apparently, so... We're gonna yeah. have to and you have to do here. it a couple of times, by the way, because the first time you try to do it, it's going to look like the stick isn't moving at all, and you might freak out. It's fine. Just do the calibration. H was freaking couple... out right yeah, before I was we like, went man, live. Did I, just, did I just break <laughs> my like, before we went live? Everything's broken. Everything's crazy. No, it works. We're good. <laughs> everything's good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Zoo's in fine health. <laughs> Zoo is in fine health. So we'll go over more of that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, there's a virtual mouse if you want it. You can register Google services. I used to think that that's where you had to go to like fully register Google Play, but it's not. You don't need to do that. I don't know why that's there. Uh, you can whitelist apps. You can disable apps that you don't want, although you really don't need to. You have plenty of resources here. Uh, there's a setup wizard if you want to re-go through that. You can do mm -hmm. a factory test if you want to check for QA stuff at all. You can run scripts. You can go back to factory settings there. Once you're in the Odin app, too, by the way, you are stuck in here. So you need to swipe from the left and then say quit. Yep. Eh, eh. Okay, thanks. Okay, so that's that. There's also a music app, calendar app, sound recorder, which actually that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. The Odin launcher makes sense if you're going to be docking the Odin a lot because it's, it's a little bit easier to navigate with just a controller. But if you're not, then there's really not much and of then, use for it. True. And then if you want to swap between apps, the gesture you'd want to do is swipe from the bottom halfway till you feel it click and vibrate. And then you can swap between apps. So we can close, mm -hmm. close, close, close. Boom. Uh, let's do the next emulator. Oh, there we go. Swipe from the right. So we play store, clock, gallery, Chrome, files. Mm -hmm. And Aish. Uh just answer really quick. I don't have a channel because I'm part of the RH uh review team. So if you want to see those videos, just go to it's our on videos. Our channel. And if you notice on the thumbnails, either top left or bottom left, this it's always gonna say whose video it is. So it'll say zoo, stubs, or Aish. And that's how you how you can tell whose video it is at, the, at that time. Yes, sir. Okay, so the Aether we're gonna go with today is 3668, which is the last good version of Aether before it went all borky and crazy. Uh, there is a, new, a newer one called Nether SX2, but you have to build it yourself, and it, it's really more work uh, than I want to go through today with you all. So let's do 3668, mm -hmm. which some people even say 3668 is even better than Nether SX2 anyways. So I'm going to app installed. So I just downloaded this and put it on the SD card, but you can just do it from the browser if you want, right from the device. Uh, MMJ, we have the Antutu storage access one. That is an awesome version of Citra for 3D simulation. We also have, uh, what Citra is this? I think that's just latest Citra. Yeah. CPU float is fun when you're trying to figure out how to get the most juice and efficiency out of your emulators. Uh, it'll just have a floating screen of specs showing mm -hmm. you you know frame rate and all that good stuff for dolphin yeah so here's the main version of dolphin and then also we have mmjr which is another great option if you install that version of aether by the way just make sure your updates are turned off in the google play store so you don't get updated yes. to the latest version of aether which has ads I so far nobody's had any issues as far as like anything bad happening with their device or tracking, but it does have ads, so that's kind of annoying. Yeah. Okay. Sit down over here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have to pick a, a, a 3DS emulator because you don't want to install a bunch of them. You can go with the latest Citri built, which has a um, Vulcan, which personally I was still using OpenGL on uh, with the Odin. It didn't really have any issues, but the benefit of using something like MMJR is one, you can set up your custom screens the way you like them. If so, if you want just a really small screen or you're okay with some overlap, you can do that there. With, whereas uh, official Citri doesn't have that. And MMJ also has fast forward. So that's another little bonus that you get out of it. If you're okay using something that's not as up to date or maybe as accurate, you do mm -hmm. get some extra perks. 
So just weigh that out. See what what you feel is a better choice for you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, PPSSPP, just grab the latest build of that. It's publicly available on the website. And also available on Google Play Store if you want to get it there. They, they're they really good yes. about updating their stuff. They are. Uh, if you want to try Skyline, it's good to have Skyline as an option because not every Switch game is going to run great in Yuzu. So just I would do Yuzu and Skyline. So I have two uh, yep. two versions here. I have Skyline Edge Final, and then I have Skyline Public Release. That's the last beta before the game breaks. I don't know mm -hmm. which one's considered better. Skyline Edge 69. I just think to 69, it's, it's worked fine so far. And that's okay. the last one they put out. That's kind of what they figured would be the best experience for everybody. So I just okay. default to that one. And then Vita 3K. So this is release eight. There might be a newer one now. This is a few weeks out of date. I was waiting for somebody to make a 69 joke. <laughs> Aish, this is a family the, show. the chat did not disappoint immediately. Somebody mm. said something. So I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Uh, 69 is fine. It's, it's just nice, man. <laughs> Those are all of our emulator S, S, uh, APKs we're going to do. Now, as far as games yeah. go, I like to install Android games. You know, you can go in the Google Play Store. You can download games. I've been playing one lately called Grim Valor, which is awesome on the Odin. Grim Valor is so freaking cool. It's like a Metroidvania. Um, it's even awesome with touchscreen controls, honestly. How dare you say that? How could you say that? What? Touchscreen controls are awesome. Only, okay, on certain games, I'm okay with them. Things like Hearthstone, Grim Valor. Yeah. Slay the hell, Spire. Hell, is fine hell even uh, Horizon isn't that bad. Horizon yeah. Chase isn't that bad with touch. I actually said that in the tablet review, and uh, and I'm just giving yeah. you a hard time because I was like, hey, there's some games that I'm okay playing with a touchscreen, even some DS games. Okay, so here are all my Android games mm -hmm. that I have a standalone. So AM2R, another Metroid 2 remake, one of my all time favorites. Doesn't stress the system or anything, but it's just a fun game. Yeah. What are you giggling about? Chat. <laughs> They're going on about that number. <laughs> AM2R is such a good game, and Nintendo was mad that that game existed, and they tried to bury it. <laughs> I don't remember where I heard this, but somebody was saying that they were don't. showing I Reggie don't. at like a game expo, and they showed him AM2R, and he was like, huh, that looks a lot like Metroid. And they're like, oh, it is Metroid. And then... Shortly after we got uh, Samus Returns. They were not happy about that. They don't like us having nice things. They don't like us having nice things. No. Um, there's the Cuphead Android APK, which is great. Well, it's not great, actually. It's it's wonky, a wonky it port. Is. But it's fun to try. So for any for the somebody just asked this. Yes, you can download from the Play Store. It's not an issue. It's just Dubs already have the APK, so it's a little bit faster. That's the yes. only reason for that. Go to the Google Play Store. You can download all your stuff. It's just if we sit here and we wait for all of these to download, this is going to be like a five-hour stream. Because that's yes. the only reason for it. This I'm just I'm just for time right now. And we're yeah. live. So for most of these, not Cuphead, since it's a port, you're going to have to go to... Um, to find the Cuphead port, you're going to have to probably go to some type of link somewhere. I don't know what yeah. the link might be, but it's definitely on the internet. Yeah, it's a, it's out there. There's a lot of ports that are out there. You know, you just mm -hmm. have to. If only we had a powerful search engine that could. Well, if only we had a link on the screen, um, where to go. I don't know, but yeah, Maybe. I would for the most part go. Yes, I go to Google Play. My password's mm -hmm. like a hundred characters long, so I'm I don't want to go through put you all through that today. Like five <laughs> MFAs to get into it. Um, so I just have the APKs ready to yeah. go. But normally, yes, I would go into Google Play on here. I would download each of my either emulators and games, although most of the emulators are going to be better as standalone APK yeah. files that you find online. So just Google it. But I think the only one that you can get from the uh, Play Store that's going to be solid is like Drastic. And uh, I forgot what the N64 emulator is called now. Uh, it's not Moopin anymore. What is it? uh n64 it, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Steve it's still Pro 64 something like something that i know like that. yeah i got a name change i just do retroarch for n64 unless it's a lower end handheld then i you know do standalone but 
do some dead cells. Mm -hmm. Love dead cells. Hollow Knight, that's a great port. And Shovel Knight's another port you could yep. do. There's also a Risk of Rain port. There's a bunch of uh, games that were unofficially ported to Android that mm -hmm. um, you might be able to find if you're resourceful, you know? Yep. The Odin 2 installs things so freaking fast. M64 FC, there you go. Yeah. I still call it Moopin because it used to be called uh, Moopin FC Pro, I think. And that name just stuck with me. I think if you if you look at uh, for Moopin on the Play Store, it still shows up uh, M64 FC. Yes. Now let's take a moment and run the system update. So if you want to do that, you go to System, Updater, mm -hmm. check for Update. Yeah. There's actually two updates. The second one's pretty. There cool. are, yeah. So you want to run them one at a time. So the what they changed in this one is well, you can just read it on screen. Mm -hmm. There's 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 240 hertz uh, option, which is crazy when you're docked. Yeah, that's really cool. So cool. Ultra dimming, color temperature validated, um, some speaker fixes, color settings for the LEDs. It's amazing they made the speakers better because they were already really good. Yes. And it'll download. Mm -hmm. Do a quick little H2O. So break. not to get on a high horse or anything, but if you are going to look for those ports for indie games, at least buy them on PC or something. Like support the, yeah. the indie devs. Don't just, you know, if possible, do that. Or yes. buy them on your Shrek. I don't know. Buy them, buy them somewhere because it's they're small teams. It's not like you're. It's not like it's Nintendo or Sony just making a game there. It's usually a group of uh, of a couple people, and they put a lot of time into those games. So let's show a little appreciation. Yeah, Jason says show appreciation. Mm -hmm. Not Ranger, Jason. Ranger Tommy. 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 Yeah. Green Ranger. I don't know. I just know he had a Godzilla mech, and that was cool. Mm hmm. Yep. I Although love Jason. Got... He's got... What? No, 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 go ahead. Well, I I know Jason was the Green Ranger, like way like a couple years back, long time in the future. Wasn't yeah, I remember? I, I not not remember back the in the day. I just I uh, Tommy did die. R.I.P. Rip Tommy. Yeah, I know. I that... just remember Kimberly. Man, that was like the I, that was like my first childhood crush. Pink Ranger. I always want to call him Jason because, but the actor's name is Jason. Yeah, Rip Jason, David Frank, uh, Kimberly. Yeah, she was awesome. And the Yellow Ranger too. She like all these Power Rangers are just. I thought they had power. They did have power. Yeah, I I loved how like the fight scenes were the original like Japanese show. They didn't reshoot those. It was just like everything else to make it more Americanized. Yeah, those yeah. were. I mean, those are good times. Those there were was. Good times. Power Rangers, then it's when they had cars. And then there was Ninja Force. Yeah. There were so many versions of that. I remember when the movie came out. That was that was mind blowing. So while we're waiting for this thing, it looks like it's taking a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and open up. Oh, I'm I'm on the big Hello. screen now. Hello. Yeah, hi. Let's I was reading chat. Right, you over Sorry here, about that. No, no, go over good. there, go over here. I'm yeah, gonna say that the Yellow Ranger uh, passed away too. I didn't know that. Yeah, she did from a car accident, I think, like, in like the late 90s. Really? Uh-huh. What was I for this? I don't know. This Man. thin plastic is always annoying to me. Come on, there you go. Yeah. You got one this. terabyte terabyte bad boy. So I put in my handy dandy transcend SD card adapter. Oop, that's in the description. I plug it into my USB port. Let me tell you. Then we're going to go over to my Uzb. <laughs> my Uzb. My Uzb. computer. There we go. This is where the magic happens. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh gosh. So I just have a games hard drive here that's about two terabytes. 
and this is where I kind of keep everything. Is that you can H? Can you see that? Okay, is the yep. sizing okay? Yep, looks good to me. Uh, Chad, everybody see this okay? I'm gonna scale that up a bit. It's the 150 percent is that crazy? That's a little better. Who's John Torturo? Dude, he's from uh, so many Adam Sandler movies. He's Someone great. says, um, Goat Viet says, Aisha, has anybody told you that you resemble John Torturo? And I'm not sure which That's one a that compliment. is. compliment. <laughs> he's I'm, a cool dude. I'm like sure it that. is. I'm going to, uh, I can't Google <laughs> it though. But we're not allowed to Google stuff on this show. We're not? Oh, nope. yeah. True. But no, hey, nobody so... said that. Thank you. So I got my SD card in here, right? I plug it into my computer. I want to get some BIOS files. You go on to whatever place you might get BIOS files from. I don't know where. Um, and then you download them, make a little folder. I like to organize it. I like to say, hey, RetroArch, you know, give me all the ones for RetroArch. Boom. All the main ones. Every system that has RetroArch, I just load this one RetroArch folder on. Mm -hmm. PS2, I just give like the main PS2 files, PS2 files uh, for BIOS. SCPH39001.bin is the one I mainly use, which is a US PS2 uh, BIOS. For PS3, you're going to have to do a PS3 update.pup, although we're not going to do PS3 because PS3 doesn't have an Android emulator that works right now. PlayStation, I always do two things. Uh, SCPH 5500 and PSX on PSP 660, which supposedly is the fastest BIOS for PlayStation. Although I think that might be a little bit of a, hmm, what's the word? I, yeah. Placebo. I think it's yeah. a placebo, but I still do it because everyone's like, no, we got to use PSX on PSP 660. And then you got to name it uh, SCPH 5500. I don't think you're going to need something like that for the Odin, though. But I think the reason why is because everything not necessary got stripped out of it mm -hmm. to make it leaner. So that's why for like lowering systems like the Mio Mini, you would want to use that. But yeah. yeah, I mean, if you already have it, you know. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, and then for Switch, you're going to want to go somewhere to get your various things. Firmware 16.0.3 is the latest I have right now. And you're going to want to get your keys. So prod mm -hmm. keys and title keys for Yuzu and Skyline. And then you're going to want to get a custom driver. So the Turnip Vulcan driver here is going to be a good option. There's also the Adreno 676. Although there's a new one that uh, Zoo was talking about the other day. You guys were talking about. And I have that loaded on my on my Odin. And it's in the description. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact name of it now. It's what's it called? Like R7 um... or something? Yeah, it's revision seven. It's the revision turn seven. up uh, turn up drivers, but it's the latest revision. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then for what else? If you want to do engage, there's even there's even engage options. Mac got garlic and onion here. That re that's really it. 3ds. You might need AES keys depending, but. I never needed them. So it depends if you're er, er, installing Sia's, but I think you have to convert them anyway for Citra. I, everything, mm -hmm. all my 3DS games are converted, so I never really mess with it. Yep. If you really want to get into that hot TI-83 calculator emulation, well, oh, yeah, we got, we got you covered there too. Uh, for Vita, there's two files you need, psp2update.pup and psvupdate.pup. Those are the only two. They, may, they might be at a link is on the screen i don't know for sure uh we normally you don't need this in retroarch you do but you're really only, only going to run dolphin and retroarch if you're on a x86 pc uh for wii u can't run it on android either uh, there is a keys.txt file speaking of those so somebody's asking about ps3 in the chat and uh, wii u so right now there isn't emulators that are not that are compatible for Android, but there are for x86 and they're currently working on Linux. Now they're saying that it could potentially happen for them to get it working through, mm -hmm. I think like a uh, box 86 or something like that, but they're still working on it. So the door isn't closed on that yet, but don't expect it there. It's something that the independent devs, this isn't coming from AYN are working on that, trying to see if it's even possible. 
Right. But yeah, yeah, you have to get Linux for that. So if you are going to do that, though, you're going to need to get at least the, the 12 gigabytes of RAM. I would say if Linux is something you want and you want to be able to get the most out of it, definitely get the 16 gig one. Yeah. And then again, there's no Xbox on Android, but just to finish this mm -hmm. off, uh, if you want to do Xbox on your x86, you know, complex 4627.bin, eeprom. Dot bin mcpx and xbox uh hdd dot q cow i always like that name <laughs> q, q cow so that basically finishes it up for uh for that bad boy for roms if you want to see just how i do this I, this is something i don't think i've shown before and you can get roms at any number of places on the internet and you know i, I do it by system i try to do compressed rom formats anytime i can to save space so you don't need to buy terabyte SD cards for every handheld or anything like that. So mm -hmm. RVZ for GameCube, CHD for PlayStation. Uh, for for Wii, I think there's what? RVZ as well. Pico hey, 8's Wii. one I like to collect. Yeah, Wii's such a pain to emulate. It, it is. CHD for PS2 is one I recommend. For Vita, that's a toughie. I usually do the PKG version, and then you always get a work.bin for the particular game you want. PS3, also do PKGs, and you're going to want a license file. What am I missing here? For the lower end systems, it doesn't really matter what format you use for the most part. Uh, they're all going to be compatible. Arcade mm -hmm. files, leave, leave, the, leave the games in their zip folders. And that really covers it. Dreamcast, of course, CHD is going to be the best. And, yeah. and of course, TI-83. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta live your best life, Ash. Oh, yeah. That their calculator uh, life. Okay, so the update one is done here. So let's swap back over. And we're gonna go to system. How come you got a cool background and I didn't? Updater. What? It up, it changed the background after the system update. It did. It didn't do it on mine. Oh, I don't know, man. Maybe mine's better than yours. I just Maybe. Have you considered that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it crossed my mind. Just uh, um, follow for switch drivers and all of that. That should all be in the description too. Yes. Yeah, I got it in there. So anything like that, if you're not sure where to click and stuff, just check the description on this stream and it's going to be up on a, as a video afterwards. You can find that stuff there. And for BIOS and games and stuff, I'm not putting that into the description, but we have shown off a way to do it on stream multiple times now. Yep. I had to calibrate my sticks too, Captain. So I thought I, I do broke expect, it before we started the stream. I do expect the uh, the sticks to break here. He's saying he didn't have to calibrate his, but um, I had to do it too. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I guess we'll... Then again, Joey's handhelds hate him. They attack That's him. That's true. But they usually oh. don't hate me, and I had to do it. Well, I don't know. First time for everything. Uh, I think okay, they just so... don't like his big, powerful hands. He has those small Canadian hands, <laughs> as we've established. <laughs> Well, once again, the second update, look, we love Joey. Uh, the second yes. update is running and it's taking a little while. So I, I don't know what to do other than to play Mario Wonder with this cute little controller Russ talked me into getting. Yeah, it is The cute. second one didn't take that long for me, so it should be done here in a second. But that is why a cool is, controller, though. Why is there a second D? So this is a D-pad. That's the D-pad. This is a D-pad. This is a D-pad. This is a D-pad. Why are there three D-pads? Because the two ones that actually look like D-pads are actually recognized as analog sticks. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just... Oh, this is you... right? This is right yeah. analog, left analog, yep. D-pad? Yep. Okay. And it's, if you press down the middle, you get an L3, R3. Got it. Well, howdy doody. I mean, I'm all about more D-pads, you know, so that's good for me. Well, yeah, you love the D-pad. Oh, yeah. I'm all about that D-pad. I can insert the pause. You can't. 
it's it's i said d questions yeah i know I you did d but you did a pause you said d pause i pad. never paused okay well dude this camera doesn't like it when i have the screen brightness up at all and most cameras don't gotta really turn it especially on this oled has anybody tested uh wander on the odin yet I'm just wondering because if it's playing on there, then I'm I, that's probably where I'm going to play it. Look how have you tried? Slim I haven't it looks. I haven't played it on the Odin yet. See, people give Nintendo a hard time about their games, but how can you not love this game? It's not all like about open world, like crazy graphics, man. Sometimes like, I had I was talking to somebody online and they were like, all Nintendo does is make fun games. Other companies yeah. do this, this, this. And I'm like, dude, that's the main point. Like, That's why, <laughs> we that's why we're doing this. <laughs> exactly. We want fun games. I stopped replying after that. I was like, this has to be a troll. There's no point in me continuing this conversation. And I do agree with uh, Bubble Bottle. Yes, the Switch is a great handheld, and I don't, I don't understand these people saying like, "Oh, we need to, we need a 4K Switch, this and that." It's like, one, I don't think people understand how hard it is to have a 4K handheld to actually run games at 4K. And two, the Switch is awesome. Like, mm -hmm. just give it a little boost, and that's it. Make a it boot. a steady 60, and let us get some 1080p on that screen, and I'm, I'm happy. Little boosty poo. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a, it's a chip from what like 2016. We definitely yeah. need an upgrade. But it's amazing that Nintendo did us a the favor of porting every single game to something the Odin can run. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We don't need 4K. We just need stronger hardware. That's it. 4K on a handheld is ridiculous. And the amount of battery drain that would have, like actually rendering games in 4K would be insane. Yeah, it's not. Um, Chad is saying like HN3 on the Switch. It's not going to happen because they, they have a deal with NVIDIA. So we're going to get another NVIDIA chip. And if they did switch to a Snapdragon HN3, they would have to rework like the whole like uh, backwards compatibility. It'd be it'd be a problem. So big problem. That's yeah. That's not really gonna happen. But whatever we get from them is gonna be really good. Uh, there's so a good. lot of rumors about like DLSS working and them getting like PlayStation Five level games working on the Switch. Obviously not as good as PlayStation Five, but better than what we have. Odin's ready. Hey, Odin's ready. See you, Mario. I like that they have a kickstand on the Nitro deck here. I ordered this and got this a week later, so their shipping times are better on these, by the way. Uh, CRKD.com, I think it is. I like the Retro Flag one. I like the Retro Flag one more as well. It's just that one matched the colorway, so I'm like, I gotta show that on stream. Yep. Quick tip, if you have a Retro Flag one and you don't like the little nub on the right side, put a Vita cap on it. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I did with mine. I think it's in the living room though, but it, it makes it way better. I get my gotta get my trinkets in order here. There's a hair on the screen. Oh no, 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 no! no. Can't have that. Mm -mm. So the battery life in here is crazy. By the way, we're still at eighty four percent. I haven't charged it. I don't know what it was out of the box. So I'll have to rewind the stream or something. But uh, it it sips. It just barely sips battery. It's ridiculous ridiculous billy zard you're gonna be fine with the base model it's just if if, if you just want to stick on android and you want to play most things the base is perfectly fine for that if you want to really push it with emulation and you want to be able to stay on like the latest and greatest things maybe consider the 12 gigs so you can get some of those games but chances are you're not going to need it for long but if you want Linux, based on what I was reading over on the AYN Discord, you're going to want the higher RAM. That's the only time that would matter. So now we have the new, uh, the second update. I want to run it one more time to confirm it's on a third update. I don't think there is, but I just do it out of paranoia. No update. Okay, so we're good. We're up to date. Mm -hmm. How are you? Are uh, your sticks working? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Sticks oh, wow. Work. Okay. That's weird then. There's probably some 
there there must be a difference between the stick models suck it ace i mean i fixed mine i'm good just in case somebody gets that and they don't know what to do it's it's a pretty simple fix you just go to the odin settings odin you settings go to yep ah oh god oh no uh odin settings yeah and then scroll down to where it says uh there you go a little bit further down joystick calibration and it's the next one and gamepad test boom there you go and then you go to uh joystick calibration and that's where you're going to be able to calibrate everything the triggers too one nice thing with the update too is that they fixed the dead zone on the trigger so there's no dead zone anymore there used to be like a, a 15 percent area there at the beginning where nothing would register if you do it now it's going to register the whole the whole the whole movement of it that was one of my only complaints in the review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, calibration is pretty easy. You just follow the steps. Um, I'm not sure if this is like the original Odin where you had to calibrate everything for it to stick. So you might as well just do that, calibrate the triggers and everything. Yeah. Because that was kind of annoying in the original Odin, where you would do a calibration, and if you didn't calibrate the triggers and everything, the calibration wouldn't stick. Yeah. Spin, Spin vigorously. vigorously. <laughs> Finish. And that should do it. Uh, let's do, I want to calibrate L2, R2. Okay. Now let's see. Let's go back into that Metroid game and see if it works the same, like Joey was saying. Did you notice any input lag? Uh, I haven't well, noticed I usually, input lag so far. You don't input content? What? You don't usually import your content to recharge? Im import my content? Yeah. So go to the side. Go down. To where it says import content. Oh, you mean to do playlists and stuff? Yeah. I don't use RetroArch as a front end. I use it as an emulator. Oh, that's so true. I... That's true. But yeah, you could. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to just, if you only want to play lower end and you're not going to use Switch games or PS2, you could do import content, scan your ROM directory, scrape box art and all that. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't do it because on CD based, CD based games like PlayStation 1, and PlayStation 2, it crawls up with CHD files. Like it crawls. It takes, it takes hours. It takes for freaking ever. So I don't import. I'm not a content importer, my friend. I don't import content. Um, what the hell am I doing now? Oh, the the A and A and B buttons are swapped. So I'm gonna yeah. swap that. Someone's asking if the dead zone on hot triggers is a normal thing. I'm not sure, honestly. I think it, it makes sense that there would be some type of dead zone on certain some triggers if you have like the digital option, but I really don't know. I'm guessing it's kind of a 50 50 thing. Some have it, some don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever hit my L2 R2 buttons on accident, but maybe some people do. Mm hmm. What were we playing? Uh, zero mission. Metroid Zero Mission. Yeah. Okay. If you if somebody in here has never played that game, give it a go. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a reboot of Metroid. Remake, actually, not a reboot. I'm sorry. How are you liking this lavender backdrop I have today, Ish? I love it. Lavender. It's very, it's very relaxing. The yellow is for like exciting streams. You know, this is today is a chill stream. Lars uh, Vercelli. Yeah, you need this. We have just go to the description and order it right now. Don't even think about it. If you're what thinking you about it, that's a yes. And the chat, somebody's asking, like, do I need oh. another handheld? Like, yeah, we. Yeah, 
yeah so not to be shills or anything but we highly recommend this handheld and uh this is the android handle of the year for me oh yeah i'm not paying attention to the damn game uh but you can pick it up at the link on the screen yep. right now or in our description it's just such a big step up for handhelds that are not uh -oh. x86 that Ish. if Ish. Oh, uh -oh. Ish, oh no it's retro, it's retro arch it's retro arch you, have to, you have to turn that on uh yeah that's it's okay right. it's okay you have to turn it on that's out. normal i was freaked yeah, out it's man it's fine I was freaked out okay all right, so if you want to use this stick, you have to turn it on. You have to go to input to the controller and turn that that part of it on. Ah, uh, ish. Ish. What are we doing that again? Uh, that's under uh, menu, not menu controls. No, no up. Uh, Retro pad finds yep. port, one, port one. Analog to digital. Yep. Left analog. Left. Okay. That's if you want to use the stick. I I usually don't with D-pad games, but you know. I know with Metroid, it's actually not that bad. Aish. Aish. It works. I like saying your name. I, I know I say it wrong too every time, but that's fine. It's, it's technically not wrong. Oh, okay. That's just it's like just... the American way of saying it. Okay. Fair. So they did uh, improve input latency. I think it was at like. Oh, I mean, six. look at that! I'm not sure what they dropped it down boom, to. Boom, 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 it's boom, not even boom, something boom, I really boom, noticed. Boom, boom, boom. Which, if if you are very sensitive to it though, and you feel like it's not as responsive as you wanted to, there is run ahead, so you can just turn that on, and it'll take care of it. Look how crisp that screen looks, though. Like, let's it's, look at oh, this. So nice. Let me look at this compared to the Swoled, as they call it. It's extremely comfortable, uh, Neon X Bomb. It's you know I'm I'm a big deep at up top guy for for handhelds, and on this one with the original Odin, I was never a fan of, of the D pad placement because it was just uncomfortable to play long sessions with it. But because of the grips on the back of this, it's actually not that uncomfortable. So it, even though it's lower than I would like it to be, it's it's still a good experience. Like overall, look at the black no complaints. Look at the black levels though between these two screens. They're yeah. not entirely different. They're not. They're, they're really good. It's only like, yeah, this is probably one of the best, best IPS screens I've ever seen. I know mm -hmm. that my one downside of the Odin 2 that I could find was the screen because it's yeah. not an OLED. But let me tell you, the IPS, though, is the best IPS I've seen. And it definitely holds its own against QLED screens yep. uh, and mini OLED screens better than the Vita's OLED screen. I think the Switch's OLED screen slightly edges it out, but it's it's very slight. It like has a little more range. Now, it, yeah. Yeah. A little more dynamic range in there. Yeah. But man, but no, they really look, look how colors. dark the the bars on the side of the, the game look compared to the actual black bezels on the screen. That should yes. give you a pretty good idea of just how good that screen is. It is a crisp, crisp screen. Yeah, T six eighteen isn't bad for GameCube until you have something like the Odin to <laughs> to play GameCube games, and then you realize I was you were sitting with some compromises there. Yes, G yeah, GameCube and PS two on T six eighteen is just a very nice bonus. I it's just I would never tell somebody to buy it for those systems. Ash, all right, let's uh, let's barrel through here. So yeah. one okay, first of all, we got to try Cuphead. Mm -hmm. I want to do one APK file. And I think this is one that'll work with controls right out the gate. We don't need I to. I think so too. If you do run into games though that you need, you need to map physical buttons to the touch buttons, what you can do is swipe from the right and then say key adapter. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give you this option and you can build your own key mappings. So you can drag a joystick to where the joystick is on screen. Um, you know, oh. grab a button and then you just click on that button and what do you want to press it as? So like for jump, let's say, let's do B. Boom, that's it. Drag another thingy for shoot. Eh. For shoot, I like to do R, R2. Super, I don't know what that means, but we'll do A. Dash, we'll do Y. And then we have our joystick here. So for your joystick, you're gonna to wanna to hold that yep. and select what type you want depending on the game, like Call of Duty Mobile, you're gonna to wanna to set it to FPS mode. 
So just read what the description is and choose the one that's closest to what you're thinking. I think adjust view mode is generally what you want. I don't know. For platformers, what do you say, Ish? Uh, just virtual joystick should work for, for platformers. Okay, let's try that. The and only just, time I really have to adjust that is when I'm trying to use it for like camera for aiming. Other than that, I, it usually works right out the bat. Which AYN has probably my favorite like screen mapping software because it's just so easy to use. It is. You can also change the opacity. So if you don't want to see those, like in this game, it doesn't really matter because the on-screen buttons are just there. Are there, but yeah. Other games where you can take that off, you can make them transparent. So as long as you know where your bindings are at, you don't have to deal with them. Yeah. Cuphead is a hard game though. So have fun with that. <laughs> it is really hard and I suck at it, but I still try. <laughs> it's like original Mega Man game levels of hard. Yeah. But there's more things going on on the screen. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts from start to finish. It's a little it buggy is. for the Android build here. So be aware of that if you try this build. But yeah. at least it's there as an option. It's kind of cool. You could also, because you have an Odin 2, you can also just emulate it on Switch. You and, can. And it'll be probably a better experience in the end. But There's also a chance... Well, this is one of those games that if the with Box86 on Linux is going to be working if you have the PC version, most likely. Layer but we might also good. be able to emulate it on um, on Winlate or something that... that um, What's the other one called? There's a there's oh, win later. We yeah. we need to do so. We're not going to do win later today because I've never we're used not, it before. No. But that we I'm are going to be a working guide on, on that soon. That yeah, Ace yeah. will be doing a video. Yeah. Why that is there a really second excited for. player on screen? I don't. That's your buddy. Press Z to exit. Which one is Z? This is why I don't like the the uh, Android port. Yeah, the Android port's all wonky as hell. But yeah. Why does it show a joystick over? Because that's the touchscreen. It's moving. It's so wonky. Like, why? Why can't I see? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, now I can see over here. I wonder if they have an updated version of this out now. Maybe. I haven't checked in a long time. Okay, why? Art, the art <laughs> style is beautiful. Over there. There. It is. Yeah, I love the art style. And it shows you just how beautiful and gorgeous this IPS screen is. Yes. Playing something like uh, Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield on there, it, you can tell like how good the colors are just for because of how much the game pops. Yeah, I can't even like get over there. Oh, I see. I'm I'm also controlling a second player. Oh. I don't know with why. D pad. I don't. Yeah, with the. T <laughs> why is it? I'm controlling two players? I'm going to have to control did two something players. something wrong here. Yeah, I, I definitely... Yeah, you definitely did something wrong here because there's two of them now. Why? Just let him die. See if that works. Okay. Oh, because screen mapping. So that's probably what's going on. Probably. It's okay. I'm just trying to show off the screen a little bit. So here's an Android game. That's not the best Android game to use as an example, though, but that's okay. Maybe Hollow Knight would be a good ex uh, example for the screen. Oh, the, Hol the Hollow Knight port is excellent. Yep. Jim Gray sent me this one, and he's like, you got to try this. And I'm like, holy crap. What? Your controls not working? Oh, they will. Just the first, okay. the first button you have to do touch screen. I think the controls should work after. How does the font on the buttons look in person? Oh, they look great. I, I'm actually not a huge fan of the font that AYN went with on this. Yeah, but the purple, the purple is my favorite version of the buttons because the color is pops out at me more than the font on the buttons. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like the Twitter X a little bit to me. Oh. All right. <laughs> the <blaspheme>. Twitter X. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like that to me. I, I don't know. The font's okay. Uh, you can see it. It's... You can see it on the dark purple as well. Mm -hmm. um, with the naked eye, you definitely can. But you can see with the, on the camera there, it's not as apparent. But mm -hmm. yeah, you can you can see it there.
personally, I don't even really look at the buttons much when I'm playing. So where the, wherever the legends are, is, I'm, I'm fine with that. Mm, yeah. I went with an Xbox layout on my original Odin. And I just got some Sakura buttons for it. Which were good, but they're not as good as the Odin 2 buttons. Oh, really? Well... We're probably going to get custom buttons soon anyway, so if somebody wants to swap those out, there'll, there'll be options. So if you're playing an intensive game, you have an option to boost up the performance. Usually leaving it on standard performance actually is fine. The CPU governor yep. scales up as it needs to. But if you wanted to force the governor into high performance mode, you can. So there's a high, there's a performance mode and a high performance mode. It will get hotter, the fan will be on more, and it will drain battery a bit faster. So standard really should cover it for you. In fact, in Russ's testing, and I think H yours as well, right? You just left it on standard? No, I left it on performance with oh, a performance. Uh, the smart fan uh, profile. Okay, so we can try that. Perform in my videos that I made previously, I also had it in performance mode with the smart yep. fan. So that's how I did it too. Uh, fan, I like quiet if you, just again want yep. it quiet but if you want it so your hands don't get hot and stuff then mm -hmm. smart is good i use smart and i never really noticed the fan kicking up and it looks like they actually improved the fan curves with the update because it's not cool. as loud as it was getting before do you know do you know what this charge separation means i charging think that's separation? for when you have it docked so that it's not constantly charging it while you're playing it you're just playing oh off so yeah. you're not killing your battery i yeah. see so yep. here's Bluetooth if you want to if you want to use Bluetooth, which, by the way, let's try that real quick. While you connect that, someone's asking about the RG Arc, uh, the Ambernick handheld. I oh, think yeah. it's cool. Yeah, um, we're excited for that. Yeah. That's it's, one I mean, thing that... It's a 353P, but Sega. Yep. Just the D-pad, which I'm good with. It's it's something that uh, I'm excited for with a lot of handhelds. It's like we keep getting like switch, new chip, new chip, new chip. It's like new form factor to me is more exciting sometimes than just getting a new chip that is probably going to do the same as the one before it so that's cool to be like the rgb 30 the reason i'm excited for that one is because it's a different screen like it, it fills a different niche same with the arc it's going to be for like a certain group of people that just feel like what they feel nostalgic is it being properly represented like sega in this case so it's it's cool i, I think it's it's a it's a good move by Embernick. Retro Game Corp Odin 2 setup guide? I'm not sure huh? what to respond to that. Oh, no, we're not uh, retro game. You know, some people get us confused with Russ. I yeah. have uh, people contacting me sometimes like, hey, Russ, do this, do that. You know, how, can you want to, can I put stuff on your website? No, no, I, I'm not Russ. We're so not we're retro actually going to be doing guides oh, and all that. It's just for somebody wanted to see it live, like what the experience is like. And this is what the live experience of getting a handle like this is. Yeah, I wanted to find who was asking for that because this was an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. um, like if you guys are on, on, on our Discord and you want to see stuff like this, just go ahead and ask there. I mean, we can't get to everything. But if there's something we can do that you guys want to see, we're more than happy to do it. <laughs> I'm just scrolling up through all of Zoo's in fine health and pickle pictures in our in our <laughs> channel on Discord. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's kind of the whole reason for for this live stream is uh, somebody wanted to see a live setup get the idea of the experience of what it's going to be like and this is it uh, these are certain things that you can have prepped to by the way before you get your odin if you want to be able to do it as fast as possible we already kind of showed you what things you can have ready how to prep your sd card so when you have it just pop that in and you're pretty much ready to go and it's definitely the, the handle of the year i mean yeah it's it's the odin odin too I don't know. Do you think there's an X86 that is more excited, exciting than, than Odin 2? 
the next 86 when the steam deck is still freaking awesome i still like no, that. no i mean for for this year for handheld of the year handheld of the year in general yep uh, I mean, I'd probably give it to the Odin too. I can't think of an X86 that came out this year that that got, has me more hyped. Did the Ally come out this year? That it was did. pretty big. I mean, Ally, I think a lot of people are going to say might be See, better. The reason I wouldn't say the Ally is handheld of the year is just because of the issues that, have, that it's had. Like the SD card thing was, I think it's pretty big. I'm surprised people were so cool about it. But having your SD card port fail is a pretty big deal nerdy nerdy by example um is is the the gentleman who asked for this live stream today so this is for you uh, nerdy by example this is hopefully you're watching or watching later and this is your odin setup guide we're making our way there slowly yeah what happened okay here we go I don't think you can hot swap SD cards in Android, can you? Hot swap? Um, yes, I mean, he's asking. You you could pull out the SD card. Uh, I just, I'm from the old school, so I just yeah. always am afraid it's going to corrupt it. So I don't do I, that. I, but I do too. I, I don't want to just point that out. I have to imagine after so many iterations of Android, but by now they figured that out though. I mean, that's just a guess, but I have not been brave enough to even try it. No, I still wouldn't risk it. So if that's a something that you want to do like you just want to get two sd cards just turn it off and do it yeah well, this um, runs great this looks good i don't know do you have to have your bios file like really organized somebody's asking that i would say do it just to be tidy but i don't think it matters does it no it doesn't matter it's just no. your own personal preference yeah the, the emulators don't care as long as you, so especially RetroArch, as long as you put it all in one directory in one folder, RetroArch knows what it's looking for for yep. each system. Uh, and when you're in emulators setting up things for like PS2 and whatnot, it's only going to show you files that are relevant. It, it knows that it's looking for a .bin file, so it's only going to show .bin files. But it does get crowded, and you know emulation is such a big part of my life that I just took the time to go ahead and organize and but you don't have look to look at those colors, man. Yeah. Get it closer. It'll look even better. I still, I don't know how AYN pulled this off for this price. The price is crazy. It is. That's, that's the part I don't get. Like, I understand they made a really good handheld and, but I would expect this to be way more expensive than what it is. Yeah. I'm glad it's not. I'm not trying to give them ideas to like, charge more for it but <laughs> well they will just, charge more at the after after this yeah. week That's uh true. you you know this is the last chance right now to get an odin 2 at a good yep. at the best price possible they still have availability on their indiegogo campaign and they are shipping now they are shipping immediately if you're buying the pro model so i would recommend the pro to get the best shipping uh, yep. I would choose base to save the most money if you're not going to do a lot of Switch mm -hmm. emulation. And I would get the max if you are focused entirely on Switch emulation and yep. you don't mind waiting a little extra time for it to ship to you. That and does you get you Linux. six. And you want Linux as an option. Trying yep. Linux out, trying Windows on here. That 16 gigs of RAM will give you the extra oomph that you need. So pick it mm -hmm. up on our screen in our description if you're interested. Um, we highly, 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 highly recommend this handheld. It is amazing across the board. It's one that now that I'll have this set up, I won't be able to put down. So thanks, yeah, Ace, for helping me with this. You're welcome. I hope it, it kind of gave people an idea of just the, the basic stuff you need to get things going. We should probably do uh, one of the Switch emulators real quick and Aether and then just call it a day, right? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, yeah. I didn't load on Dolphin, or not Dolphin, uh, Duck Station, which is the PlayStation mm -hmm. 1 emula emulator, but that's just on Play Store. Just look up for Duck Station yep. and set it up the exact same way that we're about to set up Aether. Or, so, or get RetroArch. It's, it's really up to you guys. If you want nicer looking games and just get Duck Station, if you're okay with just using some basic upscaling and you want more integrated um, so H. hotkeys, do that. So which do you think we should do? Just optimal safe defaults? Yeah, or... for this optimal safe, yeah. Okay, can handle it. Yeah. Do we say expand definitely. the cutout area, aspect ratio, anything like that? Do you want to change anything? Um, I usually, 
Yeah, so aspect ratio, I usually go 16 by 9 and try to use widescreen patches when available. Okay. But not every game supports it, so. Let's try widescreen if we can. Yeah. Um, and then upscaling, we'll probably start with a 2x native. Yeah, start with it because unfortunately, there's some games that aren't going to be able to upscale that high. That's just, it's a fault of the emulator. It's not really on uh, on um, the Odin. And I would say OpenGL, Vulcan tends to run faster, but there's still some games on PS2 that don't like Vulcan. All right, here's the important part, import BIOS. So th mm -hmm. this is where it's important to know where your BIOS files are located. So we're going to go to the SD card where we have it loaded. BIOS. PS2. See what? See how it's nice to have things organized. Yep, it's ready to go. Uh, and then thirty nine thousand and one for the USA BIOS. Anyways, got it. want to be free. So, want to break free? Um, okay. <laughs> no, don't start me on that. ROMs. Want to break free? No, copyright strike. Can't do it. And Damn. if anybody's wondering, your SD card doesn't have to be FAT32, so don't worry about that. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so yeah. XFAT for Odin, yeah. go with XFAT for your formatting yeah. style. So, so glad that's not a problem. I can't believe 2023, we still have to deal with that with uh, with some Android handhelds. Yeah. Even the G Cloud fixed Here's it. our games. I think. Did it? I know they fixed some stuff. Uh, G Cloud? I don't. Maybe I don't, I don't know. They made some updates. I just work here. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I just showed up one day and I'm here. <laughs> okay, man. Um, yeah. so we're in PS2, and so you want to set up controller. controller. Yep, you want to map That's everything. The first thing you want to do: touch screen. You want off. Yep. We don't None. need that. Controller port one, and we're gonna say auto. Odin controller. Odin controller. Yep auto map and there's a few ones we need to manually map right or does it usually uh, get it no it, it should get it i think hotkeys are the only thing that you have to manually map which is where those uh back buttons really come in handy yeah so if you want to if you want to use these really neat back buttons you have there go over to hotkeys set yourself a uh maybe a fast forward then yep. i'm going to push m2 that's the one i always use yep Boom. And then what's and the then, other one you want to do? Uh, do you, for, Maybe menu? Just open no, pause you don't menu? really need it because you have a back button. You, you're true. Okay. So that's really the only one I use unless you want to do like a safe state one. But yeah, I'll do a quick save, but not a quick load because yeah. I don't like to ac accidentally. Yep. Mess so up. that's it. That's I mean, that's yeah. And then it's auto saved. Yep. The settings are saved on the mm -hmm. simulator. Let's do something like Klonoa. Yeah. And most games should work just fine, upscaled. Uh, I was running even some of the harder games like NFL Street. NFL Street mm -hmm. is surprisingly hard to run for a game that doesn't look that awesome, but it runs great. I think it was playing at like a 3X. Yeah. And as far as front end, we don't want to make the stream too long, but we were going to at least do the start of setting up Daiji Show. Yes, mm -hmm. because Daiji Show is one that lets you do up to Switch. Yeah. And it's just the most compatible, it's free. Uh, we really recommend is for ease of use. We still recommend reset collection. Definitely. Uh, but Hav needs to add a few more emulators in there, like Switch, uh, Yuzu, and all that. Maybe it's in there by now, and I'm talking out of turn here, but uh, yeah. it, it, it's really a personal preference what front end you want to use to display your games, launch your games. There's a bunch. Reset collection. Console launcher is a really good one that's up and coming. Uh, there's a new one called Beacon that I really want to try out that I haven't had time to explore yet. That's cool. Jaiji Show is free. Tapioca Fox, good guy. Mm -hmm. And Dig is still a decent option, you know. Launchbox I is, an, always is an expensive. Dig. I yeah. do too. Uh, Launchbox is expensive, 25 mm -hmm. bucks. But, I mean, it does have some more advanced options, which is neat. Arc Browser. I still like Arc Browser. Mm -hmm. Really nice retro achievement integration. I think for me, it's just, it always comes down to Daiji Show and Reset Collection because it's made by DJ Desert Passion and... That's just an automatic win in my book. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Desert Passion. DJ DP. Oh, yep. <laughs> so for the Citra um, and Dolphin ones, don't go to the Play Store one because they're 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 out of date. Go to their websites and get the latest builds, like the latest dev builds. Yes. 
most of the emulators in the Play Store are unfortunately out of date, except for uh, PPSSPP. They do a pretty good job of staying up to date. And Drastic and um, whatever the N64 one's called. I forgot again. It's not Moopin, but that one. So those three are fine if you want to get them in the Play Store. But for things like um, Dolphin and Citra, uh, Yuzu and all of those, probably go to the website and get the, the official ones. Yeah. Or is Yuzu updating the, the Play Store frequently now? I'm not sure. I they they update it. You know, yeah. the Yuzu early access is worth paying for though, if yep. you want the latest. And then just yeah, get it from the Play Store. In fact, I N64. think yeah, yeah. yeah, and in fact we're gonna be getting Yuzu from the Play Store today. I'm gonna have to log into the Play Store. I just realized the only place you can get Yuzu is Play Store unless well, you go ahead right. and find you have an to get it. You have to get it from the Play Store. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to log in here no matter what. Yeah. I thought I could get out of that, but uh Oh man. Oh man, we're gonna Let's be do doing it. Don't do it on camera. Don't not doing it on camera this time. I usually don't put in the micro SD card. I just download it onto the console. Someone's asking that, so I just yeah. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> that's the other thing is that with these higher end handhelds, this one has 256 gigs of onboard storage, yeah. and if you get the Max, you got 512 gigs of onboard storage. You're <laughs> you don't even really need an SD card at that point you know you yep. really can just use the onboard storage because it's going to be mm -hmm. faster than an sd card anyways so yep. yeah. here's the thing though if you do want to play like android games like genshin that takes up a lot of space so when you start to look at ps2 games gamecube games some wii games some switch games heavy android games you get an sd card for all your roms and then just keep your storage for just android things that's what i usually like to do just android things hashtag yep. Yeah, because I think out. I, I'm pretty sure Genshin Impact is like a 30 gig download now. It's ridiculous. I don't know it's, why it's they crazy. Yeah. Well, this this having this M2 button is freaking. It's awesome. so nice. I love it. Every time, like that's that's my thing with the Retro Pocket Three, the Plus. It's fast like, I love. Yeah, I love the Retro Pocket Three. Like the form factor is nice and everything. I just don't like having extra keys. Yeah, not having it. I'm sorry. Like I need those extra keys. I'm too used to it. That's what I liked about the flip. So if I could just get something with they, those keys from Retro, I'd be happy. They started shipping. That's that's right. There's an yeah. there's an Odin two dashboard uh, for shipping dashboard. Mm -hmm. We need to link and add that in. I don't know mm -hmm. if somebody has it, but uh, we're gonna add that in. You can find out when your Odin's going <laughs> to show up. Yeah, somebody's saying it's a 30 gig download for Genshin Impact, and they still can't give you native Android uh, control support. That's ridiculous. No, no. L luckily, the the, uh, the the mapper no. works, but it's so why? Like, why? Apple gets it. Like, they have controller support. Why can't we get it? Dude, I don't know, man. It also never came to the Switch. It was supposed to be a Switch game too. Genshin Impact upsetting me again, man. I want to like that game. Klonoa looks like such a fun game. It, it looks I like a Klonoa. show I would have watched as a kid. Yeah, it does. He feels like he reminds me of a Digimon with clothes on. <laughs> So to download the emulators onto the device, you just literally download them. It's going to be, and then you install them. That's it. Then after you install them, you can just delete the APK that you downloaded. It'll be on the, on the, on the device. So we don't need to set any more custom settings for this age. No. So PS2. the only other thing you would have to do on certain games, like I was saying earlier, unfortunately, there's no more development happening with uh, Aether. So some yeah. games you are going to have to go into the settings and adjust like uh, some of the underclocks. That's, I hate having to do that, but luckily it's not nothing too bad. So you go with the, the gear icon is. Yeah, and you go back. There's a back button right here, by the way, yeah. to get into the menu. So go to the gear icon and then what? Yep. And then you go to a system. And right there, you can see E cycle rate, E cycle skip. Um, some games you could just drop one of the two. You don't necessarily have to do both. I've noticed that it, it's not necessary. Like with Ratchet, I think I just I did a mild underclock on E cycle rate. And that fixed it. The game was smooth. Yeah. But yeah, that's just that's the unfortunate side of uh 
of an emulator not being in development anymore. Another thing you can try is instead of doing the cycle rate, and probably what you should do first is go to graphics. Okay. So it's right next to it. And you yeah. can mess around with the renderer or the upscale. So that's ideally check that out. But if there's a game that you feel like at 1x just doesn't look good and it's just uh, with 2x or 1.5 is not hitting full speed, then check out the, the cycle skips. It's very, very few games. So don't think it's going to be for the majority of them. Most of them you can actually play at like 3 or 4x, which I don't even think the screen goes up to that resolution. Yeah, it's 1080p screen. Yeah. So personally, you, I don't you think you it. need to go higher than that. Yeah, even if you dock it, that's just me. Like I might be wrong because I'm so, not a, I don't have enough 4K in my life. But I think older <laughs> games look good in 1080p, even on the big screen. It doesn't really bother me. I don't need super sharp pixels for those games. Well, okay, and so that is PS2 for everybody. Yeah. What other emulator do we want to set up? Dolphin. Okay. MMJR, do you think, or mainline? I do mainline. You don't you don't need okay. MMJR for this. Mainline, okay. just get the latest dev build and you're good. Okay. Add your games. Yep. Add my games. ROMs. Do, 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 Game, uh, game Tech Talk. Thank you for agreeing. And yes, Digimon Season 3 is the best season of Digimon. That's not even up for discussion with anybody. That's just a fact. <laughs> and do we have to set the controller up for this one? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. So GameCube is a little annoying because if you set up widescreen right off the bat, there's certain games that aren't going to like it, like Mario Sunshine. Oh, no. It hates it. So uh, I usually just no. leave it and I turn it on per on a per game basis. Why does it not? Why does it not map? Oh, or, go or, to the gear or, icon. Get oh, the there. gear icon. Okay, yeah. okay. That's fine. Device controller and just scroll down. Okay. I have to manually right just do each one. Yep. Dang. Okay. A is a right h a is a oh, sorry i was reading the chat so yeah yeah it's, it's a nintendo layout so you can just do that a is a b is um, b yep x is x y is y yep for y. z i always go with uh r1 r1 yeah it just makes sense to me for z i do i do l2 because that's where it is on the gamecube controller right no l2 has an r2 l2 sorry the gamecube controller it does yeah, I haven't used the GameCube in so long. It I was does. Thinking, what it doesn't has it doesn't have the shoulder button. So L one, uh, R one aren't there. It just has like a Z button instead. On start on the, button uh, is start. So here's start. Yeah. Here's select. Yep. Control stick it doesn't have select. Con control stick is the joystick, right? Yep. It's the left analog. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Eh. Why doesn't it? I don't oh know. It's it sometimes doesn't see it does that sometimes with the with the official emulator, and then you have to come back and do it again. Why? I don't know why it does that. Why does it do that? This is why it I just do MMJR because this I never have this issue. You can do that too. It's the same setup process. All right. Well. well, okay. Mod. Do you want I a never, modifier? I never mess with modifiers. Okay. Dead zone, good usually. Nope, I don't do any of that stuff. I just C go down stick. to the C stick. C yep. stick is the right analog? Yep. Okay. Left. Right. Trigger. Okay, I see what you mean. That's Left trigger. Yep. Right trigger. And then you just map the analogs the exact same way. Left analog, meaning left click? No, no, left uh, trigger again. Oh wait, left trigger oh, the, again. When, yeah, when you would, when you the GameCube controller had like a two two face thing where you could pull it, and then at the end there was a click. So I you have to that. map the regular one, and then you have to map the analog. Really? Uh, analog one. Yeah. All these years, man. Uh, this emulator, I've been I've been mapping those as separate buttons. Crazy. Okay. Uh, microphone. So here's you could use the M1 maybe. If yeah, I never that. even messed with it. I don't think there was a lot of games that even took advantage of it. It was a separate add-on. Oh well, I, I don't. Yeah. Know. That's fine. You know, I don't. Yeah. My thing with. Uh, you want to do a Wii input? Should we do a Wii input? I mean, I was, you can if you want to. So what do I know, do with Wii is. Yeah, do you know I how to do this? Because I never know how to do this correctly. There's so, so here's many. What I do. There's buttons. only a selection of Wii games that I'll actually play emulated, and they're all the ones that support the classic controllers. So I'll do RPGs like um, The Last Story or uh, I think. Um, 
Sonic Colors uh, uh, supports controllers. So games like that that actually well, support the classic. Show me, that, show me how you, game. show me how you map it. So I want to learn. See device or one controller. So go back. I, I lost where we were at. Uh, just on the Wii remote. Okay, just sc the... scroll, scroll down. So Wii Mo extension. So I'll go to the extension where it says Nunchuck, okay. and I change that to classic. Oh, okay. And then you can go ahead and there should be a gear icon on the side of that. Yes. Yeah, and then you can just map it regularly. So I really only play those games. What you can do is people already have like pre-made settings for other games that you can just import the file to because it's just it's such a pain to get everything mapped correctly. Home button. Let's do M2. I use the back one, yeah. Okay. And left stick. Again, left joystick it means. See, I'm always trying to emulate the Wiimote and stuff, and I'm just like, okay, what? I have to do like Z axis, X axis, Y axis. I just avoid that. The only Wii game that I actually wanted to emulate for a long time that I had to use the Wii mode was uh, Skyward Sword, but this runs the Switch port, so there's no point anymore. Oh, good call. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm... it runs it great. Do you like Skyward Sword? That's one I never I really do. got into. Okay. I do. It's it's controversial with Zelda fans. Uh, because it was kind of a departure from where the series was heading as far as like the the overworld was concerned and they didn't like the segmented areas okay. they felt it was too linear but i loved it Sorry. um you got me talking oh, no. about zelda man like i will <laughs> i will sit here for the next two hours and just talk about zelda. just talk about zelda hey yeah. so it there was a l there was a zl and a zr yeah w and now you have, have to map the to analog l yeah, so the analogs do L2, R2. Yep. Okay, but I also did L and R. Is that just shoulder buttons? Yeah, those are the shoulder buttons. Got so it. this is for the Wii Classic. So there was a, 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 an extension for the Wii Remote that you plugged in. It was just a regular controller that ran off the battery of the Wii Remote. Got it. Okay, so Motion Plus, do we want that? No, that's if you're using the, the Wii Remote. So we're just not going to worry about anything else. No, that's it. I do. I would just play games that support that. Unless if you really want to set that up, there's there's people like on Reddit that have gone off the deep end with it and you can. But chances are there's going to be like a switch port that runs that game anyway. So just look for that option. What's one that, that'll run on the con classic controller? New Super Mario Bros. Wii? Uh, I think that one works with like a sideways Wii mode. I don't know if you have any there that would run with that. Klonoa. Maybe. Maybe. Try Klonoa. i try it. So this does have the touch controls by default, but I think this one turns them off turn after off. a few seconds. Or you can just toggle them off. Just press okay. back. Back. Yeah, and then overlay controls. Overlay controls. Yeah. Just turn them off. Toggle controllers. Toggle That's all. It. There we go. Yep. And if you're running MMJR or MMJR2, there's usually an option to change resolution from here, which is cool. So you can... Maybe you can do it from here, yep. too. Enhancements, I bet. Yep, enhancements, internal resolution. Yep. So let's start it out on a 3x. I think 3x yeah, you is going to be. Pretty you can easy. do 1080p on Wii games on this, no problem. The, see, yeah. the problem with with the Wii emulation isn't actually like that. This hardware can't do it. It's just Nintendo did the best like anti piracy job ever by using a horrible controller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. Like, it's just it's hard to emulate that controller. And they did a good job there. Tom, <laughs> wondering about the version of Hollow Knight. You know, I don't know what version that port that I have is. It's it's probably from late last year. Um, I would just do the latest. I would just go with the latest. Press. I think I think this one supports it. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Yep. So that's definitely the way to go if you can. Just look up what games support the classic controller. I think uh, Resident Evil 4 for the Wii also supports it. So you could play that version or the PlayStation 2 version. Because the, the GameCube one, for some weird reason, is in 16 by 9 but it's in a small 16 by 9 So it looks yeah. terrible. Uh, Sonic Colors does it. Uh, the Last Story, Pandora's Tower. What, am, what else am I forgetting? Ooh, here? this looks so good. Oh, crap. I think Smash does it too. Man, there's a lot of games that have support for that. And yeah, the games look really good. You can run them at 1080p. 
this is we really have a lot of issues. Yeah, this is we upscaled 10x. Or I mean, sorry, three, not 10x, yeah. 3x 3X. to 1080p. Hold it up and... a little bit. It's a little out of the shot. There you go. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Look at that screen though. Oh, yeah. The games look great. They look. It's, just imagine this dock to a TV and. Yeah, it's going to be a good experience. It's just a lot of them. It's just hard to to get that setup going. You really need to want to play that one game to go through all that. Next bomb. No, sorry. Neo X bomb. Yeah, it works really well with Citra. You're still going to have some stutters, but that's just from shaders caching. There's no way around that right now. But most 3DS games are going to run out of 4X because I think that's as high as it lets you go. Yeah, man. We looks great. It does. Okay, let's skip ahead. Just going to gonna switch, I think, at this point. Okay, yeah. So we, we there is Vita 3K, which is a cool one. Uh, I is. wanted to do a comprehensive setup, but we'll do. We're going to do a follow-up video, a more mm -hmm. a more focused, uh, produced video guide. So today is really just about enjoying the uh, the Odin and mm -hmm. setting it up with us. So you want to skip Citra for now? Um, we can set up Citra. But the, well, that one's not hard to set up at all. You want to do it real quick? Okay. Yeah, we do... just do it real quick. So uh, you add your games. That's same with every emulator. You have to add your games. That's it, and then uh, go. Yeah, make I think sure your there. controller binding is yep. good. Which and this one's already bound, man. This one's already. Or wait, no, it's not. Sorry, nope. I was thinking of a Retroid product. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, their version of the their Citra. Swap screen. We do back buttons. I love having these back buttons. Alt speed. Yep. M one, M two. D-pad up, down, left, right. Yeah, some of the harder like to run 3DS games, like um, Super Mario 3D Land, I think it's, that's the one. I always get Land or World confused. But that yeah. one, I can't remember if I was playing at 3 or at 4X, but I remember I was playing at upscale. It looked great. Yeah. That's a fun game to play. Uh, joystick, right? Okay, this all looks good. So let's go back. Uh, and it's ready to play. So yep, you well, might want to Mario... mess with your screens. Maybe what? Mario Maker is nice. Or Mario no, Land. Super Mario Land. Yeah, let's, let's do that. And then you do get this touch screen. But this, this should turn off after a second if you're not. You can also turn them off if you want to. Yeah, so back button. Yep. Edit buttons, toggle. And you just uh, touch them. Touch, touch each one, yeah. Make them all red. We don't need any of those. Get out of here, you. And then I think this is a MMJ, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you can set up custom layout for screens if you want to, or you can just swap them like side by side. It's it's really up to you how you prefer to play those games. I like this is how I like to do it. I like to go for screen rotation. Ah, no. Well, I guess you could do it like that, but if it's a shmup. I like to do custom layout and then you can just drag. So I just do the second screen. Usually for me, it can be pretty dang small. Yeah. And I'll get that. Come on. And then this main one I like to have real big. In fact, I'll even put it behind a little bit. Yeah, I'm 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 okay with a little overlap on that little screen. Little a little overlap. Yeah, just to get like a bigger screen experience, I'm fine with that. You know what? Should we be crazy? Should we stretch? No, people get mad when we stretch. Yeah. A, a, a guy today on on our, on our comment section was like, "I'm not watching this video because you stretched." <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Man, has RGB strong 30. opinions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was doing it as a joke too. I was yeah. stretching P <laughs> PSP on yep. the RGB thirty. It That's looks so exactly ridiculous. how I do it too. And it was I, just I for my own for my own <laughs> lulls. And uh, he was like, no, this is I'm done with your channel forever. This is I can't do it. <laughs> You're not okay. a real gamer. All right. 
Uh, so you hold down the back button, just leave it pressed. And you get speed up. I love that feature. And just leave it, leave it to help. You can't let go of it. But I love having that for things like Pokemon games or uh, RPGs where it's a little bit slow. I just do that. Cutscenes are not going to upscale, by the way. So if you see that, that's just, it is what it is. Those are pre recorded. So I don't know why game companies thought that we wanted to sit and watch all of their intro videos every time. I don't know. Like it should be smart enough to know, hey, you played this game before. We're not going to show you this. Final Although, Fantasy X is the worst at that. I think you're yeah. playing at native right now. I, I am, yeah. So if you want to okay. upscale, back button, and then screen, not screen rotation. Oh, settings. Um, settings. And then, and then we're going to do... There resolution. Go. resolution. Let's do... I mean, let's do 4X. Let's yeah, go let's to town. Why not? I can't remember if I was playing this game on 3 or 4X. Yeah, it's running full speed at 4x. Yeah, you're gonna get some studying from shaders. That's normal with 3ds games, but yeah. give it a give it a second to kind of. Yeah, the more you play, the the smoother it gets. And again, that's not a fault of the Odin. That's just how the emulator works. And if you've ever messed around with 3ds emulation, you know this game's kind of a pain to run. Mario's gonna die. Sorry, Mario. Okay, now should we do? Let's just do a Vita. I just, Vita I, you know what? I don't really have a lot of experience with Vita 3K, so this is all you. Okay, so this is one I like to. I, I love this emulator. Uh, this one's on me. So we don't need to download the firmware or the font package. We already have that. So we're gonna say install. And we're going to go to our SD card. And as you saw earlier that I had my BIOS file kind of organized. So we're going to go straight to my Vita folder. And uh, I never remember which, remember which one's the font file. I think it's this one. That's such a good song in the background. Yeah, it's the fake Mario song. Yep. It's a feel good jam. We'll leave it on for a while. I need to load up some new royalty free music for us oh, i've been meaning to talk to you about that but we'll, we'll talk later okay yeah I, I i'm feeling the same as you i think we should freshen yep. it up i think there's some better options well we have yeah. a lot of like euro beat going on now <laughs> yeah a lot of like techno and yeah show next time brian i'm glad you're enjoying the pimax i i don't want to like take away we from go. anybody that got one so just, that's awesome that, like, that you like it just like that ayn is a vita yeah there you go <laughs> uh and then let's see where do you load the game it's up here somewhere so you have your settings I'm, i leave all the settings of vita 3k alone all i ever do is go in to load my game which i need to get that dang loading thing off so I can access this menu. Okay. So what you want to do is for me, I do PKG files. You could do zip or VPK, but you want to do your PKG, go to ROMs, go to your Vita folder, and let's just do one uh, virus yeah. name, Tom, or 10 second ninja. Those are two ones I really enjoy. And then you're gonna have to do a work.bin file. So I always have the work.bin for each game alongside it in a, in a folder. That way it's clean and easy. It's always going to be named work.bin. So I just break it up per folder. The game loads up right like that. And just like that, you have yourself a Vita. Nice. It's going to load it's going to load shaders. Again, you're going to have these touchscreen controls by default, so that's although they do turn off after a minute as you saw, so I don't even worry about it. Hey, Brian, if you're brave, put a D-pad on your Pimax. <laughs> you should see what Ace did at his Pimax. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He customized it. He put a, R oh, yeah. a 35XX D-pad in it. I have it right here. Wait, wait, let me grab it. Vita doesn't have games that are fun. I think there's a few. I think I think uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss. It has good ports. 
it has some good ports. It had cross compatibility with a lot of PS3 indie games, so I always like that. You know, Super Meat Boy. It's just not a good emulator. I don't care what anybody says. You mean Vita 3K or the Vita? No, no, Vita. The Vita in general. No, Vita 3K. I'm glad Vita 3K exists, and I hope it get, keeps getting worked on. Just in general, like I see so many people saying, oh, just get a Vita for emulation. I'm like, <laughs> no, don't. Don't get a Vita for emulation. Get a Vita because it's a Vita, but not because you want to emulate on it. Yeah. You there have to, go. like, you have to use an overclock for Game Boy Advance games. That's ridiculous. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I got to get all these things. 10 Second Ninja is so stressful. But it's fun. Those little brutal platformers are awesome, man. I love them. I love them so much. It's my favorite type of game. It's like Super Meat Boy. Like I, I hate, but I love that game so much. Yes, I'm. That's a tough one. I still try to play it. Okay, so there's Vita. That's it. I mean, that's all there is to Vita, really. Um, you don't hardly ever have to mess with settings. Um, there's a Vita compatibility guide you can look up. Mm -hmm that will show you which games are compatible. Not a lot of the library is compatible. You can play Persona 4. You can play uh, even some... Uh, well, a lot of the indie titles are playable. Mm -hmm. But Uncharted... Which it might be a good, be good option. Like, if you don't want to get, like, the Switch version of those and you want to play them, maybe try out the Vita version. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, if we... Gosh, let's just do PPSSPP PP real quick. Uh same thing choose your games yep selfishly i just want to set it up because i want to play this when we're done with this stream <laughs> and then i'll be ready to go pps pps is pp is such a good emulator oh it's so good and what's cool is that they have the retro uh achievements built in now yep you just have to set it up just like we did in retro arch the same procedure we want to do you know i i, I somebody in uh billy zard is saying like vita is great for running playstation and psp and vita games and i agree it's good for that but i'm just so used to having like the extra features from emulators and psp emulation is getting so good nowadays that i don't think it's like a, that big of a deal that the vita can run psp games yeah Vita is really the only thing that Vita is still doing better than anything else. It's kind of like the 3DS. If you want the best experience, go with the original hardware. But for mm -hmm. anything else, there's an emulator that's doing it better. Dragon's Crown is good. Soul Sacrifice, Gravity Rush. Those are all great games. That's why you should get a Vita, not for emulation. No. Yeah, and for emulation, no, no, never. No. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, back in back in the day, yeah, but yeah, that's what I'm saying right now. Like, I think if somebody wants to get a Vita, get a Vita because it's a Vita. That's that's a valid oh reason, God. but not for emulation. Man, the you see how crazy the turbo is on this? Oh yeah, it goes insane. Yeah, I like setting up like the right stick for games that don't have native camera control. Like where you have to use L, L and R. Smart. Yeah, I do that. Or for and like in God of War, I'll set like a like a macro ah, where if I go it? left, ah. I'll set it for like L R left. And that way I'm just rolling without having to press a bunch of buttons. Look how fast we're going here. It's like a need for speed movie. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're gonna get flamed later on to, if, if if any Vita fan listens to this, they're gonna be upset. Well, I mean, we didn't say anything that's not true. That's... I know that's that. Okay, well, I have a Vita. I'm never gonna get rid of it. I, I love my <laughs> Vita, but PSP. Uh, let's just do. You know what? Let's let's. Should we skip Yuzu for today? Skyline. Will... I think so. I think at this point, like we're two hours in, people we're... have a pretty good idea. We're two hours in. Yeah. Uh, it's for, okay, so we need to choose our ROM folder. Yep. So this is Skyline, latest version 69, lol. Ratchet V, and no, the input latency is not noticeable. I don't know about you, Stubbs. Do you feel input latency? Not even once. I've definitely nope. just, ah. <laughs> People say that there's input latency on the first Odin, though, and just, I don't think I'm the right guy to really be weighing in on that conversation because I don't notice it. 
And... So I was on the AYN Discord and I, I recorded a video at uh, 240 FPS in slow mode to see input latency, latency. And I just uploaded it there because I'm not the guy for that either. And somebody was saying it was about six frames before the update. And they were saying that that's not bad at all, but it got better. My answer to that is just use run ahead for most of the retro games that have it. If you, you really, feel it at all, you, you really can. Really... Yeah, you really can use run ahead if you want. I mean, it, this yeah. can handle run ahead on any any core pretty well. Um, what's important for Switch, both Yuzu and Skyline, it's the same thing. Okay. Yep. You need to feed it your production keys and your title keys. If you have firmware, load that as well for compatibility, but you don't need that for every game. So production keys. Check out Joey's Retro Handhelds and the Retro Tech Dad. In their videos, they do link to a lot of these um, repositories where you can get these keys. Or at a handy dandy link on the screen, you could also find it there, along with many other treasures and wonders of the universe. If you're interested in Odin 2, pick it up. RetroHandhelds.link forward slash Odin 2 in the description. Okay. Uh, ROMs. Oh, wait. We're looking for BIOS stuff. Sorry. Uh, BIOS. Yeah, we're looking for the Switch. switch. Stuff. So we're going to do 16.0.2 prod keys. And then same thing with title keys. Mm hmm. And then you want to load up your GPU drivers. Right, and your GPU drivers. Uh, you want to use docked mode on the Odin for the most part. If you run into any performance issues, drop it to not docked mode. But docked mode will oh. give you 10, 1080p resolution, which See, is great. See, I did it. The, I, I was the opposite. I just and accepted handheld. So I was, I was the same as you until yeah. later in testing where I'm like, crap it really does work on docked for all the games that are working already yeah, that's true docked uh docked seems to be adding maybe five to ten percent more overhead which isn't much nope well you go from 720p to 1080 yeah it's not that big of a jump okay there should also be i, I can't remember if skyland has this where you can set the gpu clocks to max uh we'll take a look at that but first you yep. want to load your gpu driver and so the default one's okay, but if you want more compatibility and the latest greatest, load that one that we were talking about. So here's the one yep. that we got. This is the latest turnip driver called Revision 7. Load Ideally, you would use that in, in Yuzu. We haven't tested it in Skyline yet, and remember, Skyline's not in development anymore, so that could change. Experimenting is necessary, unfortunately, for switch emulation. Just want to make that quick disclaimer. Yep. And my favorite game on Switch, which people give me crap for this, I like Ben 10. Who doesn't like Ben 10? That's an awesome show. I don't know. People give me make fun of me for it. I don't. You get over I, it. I always forget if the touch buttons are going to go away. I think they do go away. They do, but you can press a little I in the corner. Bottom, 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 right. Aha, uh -huh, little I, yeah. I see. The, the physical eye, not the letter eye. Yes, sorry. You gonna get Gaigishu. What? You mean Gaigishu? Yeah. <laughs> right. The last thing we're gonna show is a front end. Yes, that's the final step of enjoying your AYN Odin 2. Let's do under a cuphead. So these drivers might not work well with this. We're going to find yeah. out. We're going to get a version of cuphead that works now. <laughs> Hopefully. Do I love how Ben controls? 10 by the end. Uh, I think in I, th I think they might work. No, I thought in Skyline no. you have to set them. Oh. I mean, don't you? Can't. you? Where is that? Controller, yeah. Yep. Dun, dun. Oh, you do have to yep, set them, do. Yeah. I always hated the Skyline controller setup. 
Yeah, this is not ideal. So just press uh, uh, L3. I did. And then yeah. you can do it. Yeah. yeah. And then you can do these. Right. This or the Steam Deck, it's it's hard. It really depends on what you're after with a, with a handheld. I would say if you're just looking for mostly emulation and you're not yeah. really, you don't really care too much about like the higher end stuff, definitely this. If you're okay streaming with like Game Pass and get this, the battery life is not even close. But if you want something that's going to be able to natively run PC games, I would say the Steam Deck still at this point. You just get a little bit more out of it. It's uh, it's a tough device to compare things to because it's just such a good value for for what you get. Now, size wise, if you want something you can take with you, the the Odin two takes it. It's not even close. Like the size difference is crazy. Dun, 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 See, if dun, you're dun. emulating a Switch game on the on the Steam Deck, let's say. A harder to emulate game you're probably looking at getting about an hour and a half out of it before you need to plug it in the odin is going to give you about three and a half to four hours with that same switch game so consider that yeah what he said yeah you also have a 1080p screen so if you're doing things like ps2 gamecube and you want to crank up that resolution there's there's that as well that you're gonna have a high res screen If you don't got Steam games, <laughs> just get this. Yeah. Most of like the the PC indies are going to be available on this somehow anyway, so not going to miss out on anything. And Microsoft owns everything at this point anyway, so you're going to be getting Game Pass with like Activision and all those games running on this anyway. Streaming, true, but not. You're going to be able to play it one way or another. Yeah. See, we were trying to play that Android version. And this one just works perfectly. Yeah, don't do that Android port. Yeah, don't. Get this. Now you can watch me be actually good slash bad at this game. I mean... You want to see the size difference here real quick for anybody that's debating what would be a better fit for them. Here's the Steam Deck. Here's the Odin. Let's see. Oh, someone's from Mexico. Oh, he Chicken Magnetic's from Mexico. So am I. What? Yeah, he's saying hello from Mexico. What's up, man? What if he's your neighbor? I don't think he's my neighbor. Are you my neighbor? What, what part of Mexico are you from? See, I'm great at Cuphead. I don't think you can officially get the Steam Deck in Mexico anyway, so uh, get the Odin. Get the Odin. Oh, but he might actually be my neighbor then. He's from Tijuana. So am I. Ooh, <laughs> Tijuana. Uh, so Daijisho. We need Daijisho. And we don't even need Play Store to load it. You can load it nope. from his GitHub. Just Google yep. Daijisho. D-A-I-J-I-S-H-O. The little oops on, on the top of it. Uh, da, 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 where are the downloads? Latest release. Do not use the APK unless it's necessary. Installation size is larger than Play Store. Hmm. That's fine by me. Probably when you download the Play Store version, it downloads assets once you load it for the first time, which oh, probably true. is a better experience. But uh, I'm cool with it. Uh, where do we actually download? We click latest. Should be in releases. Yeah, latest. Scroll releases. down. Releases. Yeah, release. No, no, that's release note. Hmm. Yeah, where's the actual file? I don't know. I there releases right there. Two hundred twenty-two. Yeah, 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 but... Uh, oh, it's not... Go down? It's not down, down. Oh, it's probably... You're right. It's probably way down. Yeah. Here we go. There you go. 399.apk. So it's going to be a big download, potentially, but, you know, it's... It's all good. 
if Daijisho updated for you, go ahead and remove it and uh, go with the version we showed earlier today and use that one and turn off auto updates from your Play Store because it's going to do that again if you don't. I like going Play Store-less whenever possible. I just don't like the overhead of Google Play. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like all of the notifications when I'm on a gaming handheld. So if I can get away with APK files, boy, let me tell you, that's the way to go. Yeah. You no, don't want no the harm man in it, knowing though. everything. Yeah. I don't want the man knowing everything. Yeah, that's right. But but if you want to play games like Call of Duty Mobile, you want to play Diablo Immortal, all that, yeah. where you have to connect with servers, save yourself the headache. Get Google Play. If you yep. want to do Game Pass, GeForce Now, which we're not going to cover streaming today, but if you wanted to set up Game Pass, get Google Play. I was wondering if they still have that option to turn off Google services, but it looks like they don't. They do. Yeah, they do. It's still there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just not logged in. So if you don't log into Google, I believe it disables it, right? I don't know. I'm trying they to have see on, that. They have it on retroid devices that way. Yeah. Okay, Maybe so they feel the... like you don't really need it anymore. Sorry. Maybe not. It's probably not necessary to, to completely disable on here, but, uh, Okay, so Daijisho, it gives you a bare bones app at first. So you want to download what systems you want to play. For right now, we're just going to do Switch. Just as an example. So it's alphabetical by system name. Switch. I'd say just pick a couple so they get a, a general idea, because if not, it can take a while. Yeah. And then choose your path. Yeah. Add more, go where your ROMs are at. ROMs. You know what, Jared White? Who's who's going to tell? I don't think we have any snitchers or swallowers. And then, and then you say sync. Yes. <laughs> 50K followers, that'd be nice. We don't have 50K yet. We have like 40 something. We're getting there. If everybody that watched our videos would subscribe, we'd be there. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be good. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm upset, you know, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah, we need more. I mean, we want to get to 100k so we get that fancy, uh, that fancy plaque. You want they'll that let plaque. us, yep. they'll let us order three of them. So Zoo gets one, I'll get one, H will get one. I'll put it up on the shelf. It'll be, it'll be really cool. Chicken hey, McDonald, um, you don't need a gape. Sorry, he was asking. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. How, how long have I had a can of spam? Yeah. So my friend Kyle, Rip Kyle, um, sent this to me before <laughs> his untimely death in my attic. And, uh, you know, this was nice. Originally, there was a top on here that had an inappropriate drawing of a phallus. And uh, I removed that for the stream. But it was on here, and it was very lovingly. It's best used by November of 2024, so we're good here. This actually isn't spam, but this is actually a candle. So you just light this bad boy, and you're going to smell spam in your house. Okay? Which Ban loves the smell of spam. And Ban is the man, our producer, who lives in my ceiling uh, in my attic. And uh, so I light this candle for him every night and he wafts and smells and imagines yep. what it would be like to eat spam. I can't afford actual he spam actually for him. He doesn't get to eat it. Yep. He doesn't get to eat it because I'm already nope. feeding three kids and two dogs. Yep. So he understands, but uh, that's what the spam's about. So thanks for noticing. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, uh, a plant. This is a real, uh, what do you call these? Not a uh, cactus. It's a succulent. succulent my wife's yep. my wife's succulent. Uh, she said it would look great on camera, and so she's given this to me. I need to remember to give it what it needs, what it craves. It, it needs electrolytes, spam. And, and it eats the spam. Uh, he hangs out next salt. to my Power Ranger Tommy, of course, and we got of course uh, Mario. He goes, Wee -wee -wee. and then we have this is a trick. You want to see a fun little trick? This is a toad, but his head comes off. <laughs> Doesn't look like it wants to come off. <laughs> and, and inside are my guitar and are my guitar picks. So that's where I hide my musical instrument accessories inside that's his head. Spam is like Hawaii's number one food choice. Someone's saying that in Hawaii they lock spam. We need to talk to Russ about this. The spam we, situation we in Hawaii is out of control. So what's nice about it's true, man. It's it's really a problem. So what's what's nice about Daiji Show is that it. it scrapes box art kind of as it's going here yep so it already has switch box art here and you know you can 
connect it to retro achievements to see your retro achievement scores and stuff in the UI here. Let's do a little Celeste. You know, and the Odin can handle way more intense Switch games. It's just I don't want to sit here through intros and play whatnot. some Breath of the Wild. I, I wouldn't play Tears of the Kingdom yet, but Breath of the Wild is it's, running pretty it's nice. It's getting there. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, and that's I mean, that's basically it. You know, there's lots of front end options you could do. But once you have everything scraped for your box art, then what you could do, OK, is go into your settings, go to your apps watching this checking this out default apps home app change it from quick step change your home app to your front end dig show that means when you boot up your odin okay it's gonna load straight into the front end so this is the experience now you're never gonna see android unless you want to go there uh when you hit the home button it's gonna go back to the front end so this will be your whole now it's like you have a steam deck now it's like you have a linux handheld mm -hmm. it's just really nice that you can do that. I actually like this front end a little bit better than a lot of Linux options. Yeah, yeah, it's it's clean is what it is. And you can do a dark theme, a light theme. I like dark theme personally. It's a pretty nice experience when you dock it too because you can fully navigate it with a controller. It's true. Yeah, you can. And great. Look, now this is my Odin. And also has all of your Android apps in the front end you can choose I from. I love that. And there's widgets, so you can do widgets to show you maybe your retro achievements. You can actually do a randomizer button if you want to randomize what games you want to play. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm going to say, what game do I want to play? I don't know. It'll Torchlight 2 for the Switch. I don't know if that's going to work. Might as well try it. The only problem is with... Um... I don't know what the hell that's about. There we go. Yeah. It's that sometimes there's some emulators like Aether SX2 that won't launch the game directly from it. So when you try to launch that game, it's just going to take you to that emulator. It's kind of annoying, but that's just, it is what it is with it for now, at least until we get some updates on PS2. Which, by the way, if anybody knows how to like uh, convert <laughs> PC emulators to Android, do us a solid and do it with PS2. We'd all appreciate it. Yes, please. I understand that it's extremely more like way more complicated than what I just said, but I know one of you can do it. You're capable people. Torchlight 2 works right off the bat, I guess. I bought that game and I never played it. Really? Yeah, I like Torchlight. It's a good series. I mean, it's like Gauntlet, like a modern Gauntlet. Oh, it's fun. It's good. It runs well too. Oh, Ooh. nice. I know what I'm I know where I'm playing it. Yeah, this looks beautiful. Okay, enough games from us, everybody. Yeah. We're going to wrap this stream up. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Good stretch. Good stretch. That is play. I, I thought play wasn't a real emulator. Someone's asking if we've tried it. Or is it just a new one? The PS2 emulator? Yeah. Um, I haven't I haven't tried. Uh, there's an Android one now, right? I haven't messed yeah. with it yet. It's just the Aether fills, yeah. fills the niche so well. I haven't found a need. Uh, okay, everybody. So thank you for joining our AYN Odin 2 setup live stream. Stay tuned for more videos from us. Aish is a really our guides guy. He just knows this stuff so well. Uh, stay tuned for his video. He'll cover this stuff. Uh, we have more Odin 2 content on the way. It's just, it's the best handheld of this year so far. Android, whatever for us it really has been the best uh and it's I, I i love it and i'm going to not i can't eat i must not eat it i no, promised i wouldn't it. eat them anymore but i'm gonna play i'm gonna be playing with this for a long time uh yep. this is one that it just does everything that i want yep. so we recommend it if you're interested in the odin 2 of course you can pick it up in our description or on the link on the screen right now and uh, shipping, it's shipping right now. Get the Pro if you want it faster. Pro will handle it, handle really everything. And mm -hmm. it's probably worth it to get it just to, yeah. Uh, as, as difficult as it is to say this, like future proof, because I don't know how future proof you can really get, but it's probably the safer bet. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's the best yeah. week. It's the best uh, the phones have right now, and it's the mm -hmm. best that the handhelds have. It's crazy yeah. that they're on the same 
cycle right now. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is around the corner, though. And next year, we're probably going to see some handhelds with that. Maybe the Odin 3. So really, that's the only thing that's going to beat this. Where I'm excited for the Pocket Air S. That might come close because it also has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Uh, also still excited for my Pocket Air because of that OLED screen. So we're, we're going to have content on that. But it's tough to beat the Odin 2. It yeah. really is all you need. It's going to come down to price. I don't think some anybody's going to be able to match what AYN's doing right now. Agreed. Um, and with that, everybody, thank you. Uh, which brings us to the point where, oh, and get ready for this. We have a new patron screen that Aish helped update oh, yeah. today. So patrons, thank you all for being a part of us and helping us live our dreams here to do this channel and our community, you are all what makes RH so very special, and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you guys. Until the next one, Stubbs, on behalf of Aish, take care of your handhelds, and take care of each other. Bye. Thanks, guys.